Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be in the world. Welcome to TraderTV.Live. We're seeing North American stock futures back in positive territory once again this morning with markets coming off their best single day performance since July uh, on Wednesday. Nice rally yesterday spurred by a tweet early on by U.S. President Trump suggesting uh, he was still in support of an aid package for both airlines and other smaller uh, type uh, ideas going forward. So uh, a little bit uh, of a development uh, again this morning in that sense as uh, President Trump was uh, on, uh, on Fox this morning talking in front of the White House talking about further stimulus negotiations that are uh, still underway and uh, proceeding in the right direction. Uh, we also got the uh, weekly U.S. jobless claims numbers uh, out this morning that were a little bit better than expected. 840,000 versus 820,000 expected. Uh, so higher, but uh, not as bad as originally thought. Individually today, IBM shares skyrocketing in the pre-market after uh, the company announced it will spin off its infrastructure services business into a new publicly traded company. And we'll also have a look at uh, some upgrades, lots of them today. Roku shares are higher. We have uh, Netflix back to the upside, DraftKings as well, uh, all with upgrades. Domino's down, trading lower in the pre-market after uh, uh, a solid earnings report from the company. It's Thursday, October 8th, 2020. TraderTV.Live starts now. We're going to look at Asian markets from the overnight session. Bit of a mixed story here. Australia having a nice day, though, up more than a percent. Let's go over to Europe and see how things are shaping up so far. Nicely positive, top to bottom here. We'll shift over to North America and have a look at uh, some more positivity. As I mentioned there, NASDAQ, nice to see back in charge uh, to the upside. 0.8% as far as U.S. markets are concerned. Uh, Bitcoin, the only one there, slightly lower. Crude oil, 2% higher to start, along with gold prices as well. Also in positive territory. Good morning, guys. Uh, lots to talk about uh, so far this morning. Uh, it, it's been a bit of a uh, tweet storm from uh, U.S. President Trump this morning, talking anything from vaccine to possible aid still to come uh, as far as uh, COVID relief. So uh, lots to discuss and lots to look at so far this morning. Yeah, 100%. I mean, as you mentioned it there, uh, Regeneron, it was up, I, I thought I saw like uh, over 4, close to 5%, like 4 uh, four percent now, of course, uh, the president talking about uh, emergency use uh, for, 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 for their, their treatments. And of course, uh, Eli Lilly moving on that same news as well. Uh, may not be a second debate. I don't know. Uh, we'll see how that definitely goes. But uh, in terms of the political, political news, uh, you did see in the ba with the Beige Book, the Fed came out saying uh, that that stimulus was needed for the kind of growth uh, that, that is expected in the recovery. And uh, obviously that's going to put more pressure on getting a stimulus package through. And there's these you know, talks about what can happen for the airlines. It seems like there's support on both ends, but there's nothing yet. So you'll still see a lot of those travel names uh, going to be sort of uh, subject to any breaking news that does come out. But uh, as of right now, it doesn't really seem like there's anything too, too concrete. Lots of things still to watch. Uh, in the markets, lots of gappers upside, uh, you know, upside here this morning that I'm watching in a couple of shorts already, as you can kind of see. And uh, going to make me hungry, all the Domino's pizza we're going to have to talk about today. Not bad earnings, but their costs way up. So uh, that puts some pressure on their margins, Sean. Also, uh, Neil, you may get hungry with McDonald's talk today as well. I can't, There's a few I names uh, on watch there. And then, uh, of course, we talked about Roku and uh, how crazy that's been for a while. So that'll keep going upside, and we'll look to take uh, a long Roku, I see Fastly today as well. Wow, I see Plug Power uh, up to $19. Uh, it's just Palantir's on the watch, Neo's on the watch. I mean, AMD's at $88, like, like 30 million unemployed. Okay, uh, the market just keeps on trucking northbound here, Brendan. It's going to be an exciting day, an exciting uh, end of the week the next two days. Let's see what happens. I mean, I just hope that that uh, Trump debate thing actually happens. But virtually, it doesn't look like it will. Yeah, he's talking uh, possibly about doing a, a rally instead of a virtual debate. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens next week. I uh, just saw a square popping up here, guys. There's a little bit of a headline here. If we could throw my screen up, Robbie, there, there we go. Uh, square investing 50 million or billion, no million, 50 million in Bitcoin, uh, apparently. So big investment. You can see Square just went from 183 up to above 
184.50, uh, recent highs at least for uh, Square. We'll have a look at that as well. Uh, lots to uh, touch on this morning as far as what is coming up a little bit later on in the show as well. We'll talk about that first. Uh, we recorded it last Wednesday. If you joined us Wednesday, 1 p.m. Uh, yesterday or last week, we uh, had Arun in with us to uh, talk about his journey as far as becoming a full-time professional trader. So we'll uh, release that coming up at 11.45. Valeria will have the link in the chat for you around 11.45. Speaking of, uh, Miss V, let's go over to the desk and say good morning to her. Good morning, Brandon, and hello, everyone. Have a wonderful trading day. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, share the link with friends, and smash the like button. Take it away, Brandon. Yes, let's uh, jump right into what is moving around in the pre-market this morning, guys. If you haven't already, throw your link in the uh, or throw your email in the link that uh, Valeria will provide for you, and grab the watch list. It's absolutely free. We discuss everything that is moving around in the pre-market every single morning uh, between 9 a.m. and 9:30. The first one we're going to talk about this morning: IBM up more than 10 percent. Although I just noticed it was uh, coming in a little bit here uh, recently. Uh, they're going to spin off their managed infrastructure services unit into a separate publicly traded company. We've talked about uh, in the past, anytime a company is able to spin off a division or a unit into a separate, uh, in this case, public company, it's always a positive for them. It definitely is, and you sort of, uh, I'll ignore this, uh, not, well, not going to ignore you, but we'll show the pre-market chart. It is coming off in literally like $9 so far, but that's still up 8%, guys. Uh, IBM making this break from like a buck 25 buck quarter here uh, bursting right through what was previous resistance so the good news is uh, we can look at this 136 level uh, up here and maybe that's going to give you a secondary push at some point uh, i'm going to definitely be looking at 130 support on the way back in and then look for a potential break uh, through that 136 price in the middle Probably not going to touch it. This is this is obviously good news for IBM here. Uh, great for the shareholders. Uh, you know, a tax-free spinoff is always going to be uh, a positive. Maybe uh, there was some buying up at the top that was a little bit hasty. Uh, you know, you get that pre-market action, light volume uh, or so, but it's ramping up uh, two million in pre-market volume right now. It's going to be in play all morning long. Uh, I like the 130 area. That's going to be the first look, but also uh, eyeballing this 136 for a secondary breakout. So even if, if the dip buy doesn't work, it doesn't really give the entry point. I'm looking for 136, uh, not through the top, but through the previous resistance. Yeah, I wrote down uh, 136 as well. Look, I've been an investor in IBM for a while and actually trimmed my position about... I don't know, uh, before the pandemic, but uh, IBM's useless uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it, it doesn't do anything. I mean, this is supposed to be a tech company. I'm glad they're spinning off uh, different methods there and, and, and some of their different programs. But uh, yeah, not great. They've already changed CEOs. I mean, look at the daily chart here. I mean, compare this to... Oh, I got to zoom out of here from our, our lesson yesterday. Um, you know, you got to like, compare this to any other tech company. I mean, you're, you're still in this range i'm not even happy with this 136 neil's already talked about that that's really the only level uh that i can look at here I, i'm not going to go long ibm uh otherwise but if we get back up to 136 then i'll i'll, I'll hit that i wish i would have been able to short it earlier because uh, yeah i i'm not i'm not confident about ibm here right, guys let's go on to uh the next one here a little bit of earnings news we talked about it at the end of the show yesterday domino's pizza uh reporting better than expected uh, quarterly comparable store sales due to the pandemic Lots of people ordering pizza online and having it delivered. 17.5% uh, increase uh, year over year uh, in the third quarter ending September 6th. That exceeded expectations of 13%. That was a big number. Uh, the company reported uh, net income of $99.1 million or $2.49 per share. Both of those also beating expectations. However, a uh, little weak here for DPZ. Yeah, uh, it just as, as alluded to there that you know the issue came uh, uh, why the EPS was uh, underwhelming uh, would have just been their costs are up and of course uh, operating during COVID can drive up uh, can drive up costs for some in, uh, businesses uh, that was the case here uh, margins missed as well I think it was uh, 18 uh, came at like 16.8 or something like that so uh, this is what's going to depress the stock but as you can see strong upward trend it's been a, it's been a good company a good pivot I mean I can't even lie like when they when they when they rebranded themselves uh, a couple of years ago uh, I started ordering Domino's Pizza more although we make a lot of homemade stuff now it, it, it bounced off 405 right here in this pre-market uh, little fallback uh, off of the earnings uh, you know right at the 50 period right at that 405 mark now we're just literally consolidating at 410 it, it just feels like uh, on a positive swing here you could get a nice little breakthrough around this price 
If you're giving it to five bucks, you got to believe it's going, you know, through 420 and making a move to like the quarter or 430 mark, which isn't crazy to me. Uh, but I think it's giving a little bit too much uh, more room than I would want. I, I like that 405 level. I think if you can defend it, fantastic. Uh, a breakout off the open probably means taking it you know, almost like right away and looking for a quick scalp and then using the pre-market, uh, not that pre-market low, but this low here, like a 408 or something like that for a first trade. I'm expecting a wide gap. Uh, off the open at 9.30, so ideally, I'd much rather be taking something after a minute or two in Domino's Pizza. Yeah, you got to give it a, a little bit of time. The spread, obviously, here. Uh, it's actually only 50 cents, but only 130,000 shares. Look, we're right near that uh, little line that I always like to reference here, and that is the 50-period moving average uh, on a daily chart. So that's going to be 405, 405, 50. It's not an exact... Well, it is an exact science, but I don't know exactly what it's at here. Uh, about 405. So if Domino's can hold 405, then uh, I think that's a good starting spot to go long. You know, you go long 406, 407 ahead of that 405. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the quarter looks fine. Not sure why it's down this 5%, but it's been such a big run. And uh, I'm just wondering if some of the steam is coming off of it. Much like IBM, people could sell maybe you know, going long into the quarter. I mean, look at the daily chart. We just looked at it. We'll look at it again. Going into the quarter here, uh, a lot of obviously bears, uh, or sorry, bulls coming in here in the last month. So I'm wondering if this sell-off is just because that number didn't beat as much as they had thought. So uh, you could get a sell-off through 405, and then if it does, then it kind of turns into a no-go for me uh, because then it will start turning short-bound. And uh, I don't think we get anywhere near here, 370. But if you, if you break 400, uh, then yeah, I, I think we could be in for a little bit of a nasty ride. But I don't see the catalyst for doing that right now. All right, guys. Uh, Sean, I'll come right back to here with Beyond Meat if you want to uh, grab Beyond Meat's chart here. Uh, headline just coming out. Beyond Meat has this uh, habit of releasing uh, information or, or news releases right at nine o'clock so uh, here we go again 9 a.m beyond meat saying their newest product to innovation beyond breakfast sausages and links will be available at grocery stores nationwide starting today so i uh, just saw a nice little pop there for beyond meat look at this daily chart uh, i mean another three percent move here for beyond guys yeah uh I mean, Beyond Meat, I, th this is one name that I'm actually happy we got in at, at IPO prices. I mean, I'm long down here, $60, $70. Um, so it's really nice to see this kind of move. Obviously, we saw what happened. I got I to gotta actually make this a little bit smaller here. It's too big, that, that title. Let um, me just close that off. There you go, so you can see a little bit better. Uh, we saw what happened here. This is when the market was broken a little bit on Beyond Meat. Uh, they came out, and it just went basically parabolic up here uh, to 250 in just a couple days from uh, 169 to 250. But it's kind of making the same move right now. 152 up to 190. And then right now we're printing, yeah, we're printing that 195-ish. So uh, on a daily chart, man, Beyond Meat just looks absolutely incredible. I want to give a shout-out to Mish Schneider uh, from Market Gauge. She was talking about it down here at 80 or 90. Uh, and now you wake up to a 200 print probably today. Let's take a look at the daily, at the minute chart. It already took off the top here, uh, so not much to look at there. 194. Uh, 196.50. Look, I mean, right now, $1.50 spread, right? It's going to have to be very similar to what we did yesterday on Square, where we we waited for that first couple prints to come through and then see what we're dealing with. I'm not even going to look back here. It's not going to go down to that level. Uh, but if you are holding longs, uh, 192, you know, 193, you give it to this bottom, 192 uh, might be a good little spot to get out. But I don't think I really want to short this, although uh, we are approaching that, that, you know, lovely $200 level. That didn't seem to matter for Roku, but uh, maybe beyond me, little, little resistance up there at two bills. But uh, other than that, it's uh, full steam ahead on uh, Mr. Beyond Meat. Yeah, I wouldn't try Roku, uh, you know, Roku uh, at the 200, but like a, a Beyond Meat, I think uh, uh, not quite the same uh, same type of name here. And I ignored Roku at 200, uh, but I won't uh, on Beyond Meat here. Uh, if it does get to that price, and there's you know sort of any kind of a, a seller, there might be a good scalp short in there. Probably need to see some actual liquidity and volume behind that one, as opposed to just uh, trusting that even uh, 200. All right, guys, uh, Tesla up 2.5% here this morning. Another one kind of breaking back to the downside. Uh, no real significant news on this. Uh, uh, who was it? It was New Street Research upgrading Tesla today to a buy rating. Uh, Elon Musk also in a, a company-wide memo yesterday suggesting 500,000 vehicles, as far as production is concerned, achievable for Tesla in 2020. So another day, another uh, gap to the upside here for Tesla. Yeah, I mean, after after the last delivery number that put them, uh, you know, put them on pace. If they got the same sort of uh, incremental increase uh, each quarter, it's basically right at that 500,000, which has been their target all along. Uh, I mean, the only negative news was uh, people butt dialing uh, upgrades 
uh, on their phones, like a four thousand dollar upgrade. I know a couple. I mean, uh, Nassim Talib, the Black Swan guy, did that last year, and I think there was another report today of it. So I don't know. I guess they'll figure that one and get it ironed out. This four forty level is worth uh, worth bearing interest. Uh, there was some resistance previously. We just sort of uh, uh, turned on it uh, in the pre-market here on solid volume, over a million shares in Tesla. So I'm watching a 440. Now, obviously, we didn't get past that 450 mark, so it's a bit of a scalp into that level as well, where there might be a shorting opportunity. You've seen it ramp up. It's been very clean in the last couple of days uh, and now a 10% move. So I think you probably are going to find some resistance at that 50 level in the event. Uh, that there is a 440 break in the first place, which isn't guaranteed. But I'll be having a look at that level uh, to the upside. Yeah, I mean, look, te you mentioned uh, there, Brendan, that Tesla doesn't have any catalyst or anything today. They don't need that, obviously, uh, as Tesla is just a, a monster stock. We keep telling you guys uh, buying it. I keep telling you it's going back to, uh, to, to all-time highs, and I, I don't see why not, unless, of course, this market crashes. But get your money into Tesla right now before uh, they release more numbers and they beat everything that's out there. So uh, that's my opinion on Tesla. There's going to be new products coming. The batteries just keep getting bigger and better. Um, they disappointed at Battery Day, and we're still you know, at 440. So, okay. I mean, imagine when they do release that, uh, what was it? The 10, 100,000 mile battery or whatever they were, million mile battery, whatever that was, as soon as that comes out. And then plus also another thing that's not being considered as much uh, that I keep talking about uh, is the solar power business. So uh, we're going to wait to see what Tesla can do at home with some of the batteries there as well into the home space. But right now they're not, like I keep saying, they're a car company, but they're a tech company, they're automation, they're everything. So some of the parts, man, Tesla goes higher. Uh, let's go to uh, Roku here, guys. Want to keep going. We got a few to get through as well. Uh, Roku uh, to the upside, big time, four plus percent. Deutsche Bank and Needham both uh, raising price targets for the stock this morning. Uh, the more interesting part of the story, TLC, little Chinese electronics company. Well, it's actually not so little anymore. It's actually the number two globally ranked TV shipper. Uh, in the entire globe, which I thought was kind of surprising. TLC, uh, they do sell them here in Canada as of, I think it was the beginning of this year. Uh, but uh, yeah, number two to Samsung only now, Roku now on uh, TLC products as well. Yeah, I mean, Roku's also in Samsung. So I mean, Roku, look, Roku's doing big things. Shout out to Chris yesterday, our guest trader. Uh, there are, again, he was the one that was said that he has like 10 Rokus in his family. Uh, so shout out to you, Chris. Thanks for that. Thanks for your nice uh, tweet yesterday about uh, how much you enjoyed being on the show. That's fantastic. Uh, look, 222 right now, Roku. We're going to go long on this name, no matter what, at some point today. Would love to get this thing through 222 but again uh, you know you have 50 cent spread and it's I keep repeating the same thing, but we're not going to go long off the open. We're going to wait. We're going to wait about a minute or two. We're going to see if we test that 222. If we do, we'll take it, but hopefully like 931, 932. Would love to see if it comes back down here to 220. We can sit there, take a little bit of a long up at two, or down at 220, I guess. Wait to see if that fails. Uh, get out, of, even if we use this bottom here, 219.50, something like that. But I think it's worth putting a little tester down here. I'll put it right now, see if we get tested out. Uh, take a little baby long. and. and at least then if it does go down, we have something uh, before it breaks through 222. If that does happen, you can get real cheeky with it and, and go long now, breaking through 221.50. But with 18 minutes to go and liquidity could dry up, obviously on the bid and the ask uh, with one little move down here, you could go down a buck. So it's not worth it for me. But I'm going to sit here somewhere uh, around 220.50 and see if I can't pick up a little something on the cheap cheap. Yeah, I think that's the right play. When you see that tight of a range, it just seems like that's the better play. Like, it's, there's almost a really good chance it's going to give you the price you want if you're patient and wait for it instead of paying a 50 or 60 cent spread. But I'm looking maybe a little bit, not, not too much further, but a little bit deeper. I think Roku, because of liquidity, could actually maybe even break the 220 while still holding the bottom and going to the upside. So I'd look to see if it does do one of those little snaps down, uh, catching on the way uh, on the way back up. Uh, that's in the event that it does like a fake out at that 220 price. Uh, I want to quickly jump out. Uh, you're going to see I have a few positions on, but I just wanted to, uh, to go over a couple of them here. Uh, one of them, uh, DPW, uh, they got an update on their uh, on one of their uh, product lines. It's their ESS. Uh, system. I got into this one in a bit of a rollover play in front of like a 315 to 325 area. Um, it, it's starting to head to the downside. It's one of the weaker names in terms of the gap up and the retracements. Uh, you go to the daily and the first thing notice it did not even approach previous resistance at 450. Uh, but this this light resistance at 370, it failed and has come back in. So I kind of like this one in terms of uh, 
the structure and the overall sentiment of the stock, but this one also previously closed at 255. So it only probably has another 30 or 40 pennies to go here, which is why got to try to keep the stop to at least 20 to 25 cents on a DPW. Uh, the other one's looking a little bit uh, more normal, I would say. OPTT is a second day play. Uh, but some of these on the watch list, of course, guys, a little bit later on the list. Want to make sure we got to it. Uh, both Regeneron and Eli Lilly uh, up this morning after U.S. President Trump suggested that uh, both companies will get uh, FDA emergency use authorization for their antibody treatment of COVID-19 in an interview this morning. So uh, both had really been doing not much of anything in the pre-market. Regeneron was higher after they the company came out and said they were going to apply for this approval anyways. Eli Lilly mentioned that yesterday. So both uh, trading higher here. Regeneron doing a little more volume, guys, but both kind of coming off in a hurry here. Yeah, there was actually a spike in Regeneron. Uh, it, it fell from like four, uh, 615, almost down to 600 even. Um, the volume is only 100,000, so take that all with a grain of salt. But it is, it did bounce back and is continuing to fade. Normally, uh, this would be a situation where I'd be looking uh, to see a test back up towards the high and see if I can't slide into a short. Um, because of this flush on the greatest amount of volume has already come in and we're not able to test higher, it's going to be difficult to put that trade on because it's unlikely that I'm going to get a short in around 616, 17, which is what I would have liked uh, off of the open. That seems less likely now, $8 away from that range. Uh, but you never know. It, it's going to be fouled away. You'd want to give that one to the high of day. So risking about 5 bucks to see if it can't come down uh, about like 10 to 15. Uh, but the risk to reward doesn't make as much sense shorting it here for me at like 608, 609. So probably going to have to uh, fade that plan. Uh, put it in the back pocket. You never know. You could get enough of a bounce here uh, to be able to fade it at 615. I'm just not sure that's going to happen. Look, Eli Lilly, uh, when the president starts talking uh, about your company, normally that's a pretty good thing, up 1.73%. I like Eli Lilly here. It's not even, it's down uh, in its range. I'll show you the daily in a minute. 153, it takes that. You know your boy will be long, and uh, we'll probably put some real risk into this one. Uh, quickly on the daily chart, this is what I'm talking about here. Uh, there is some breaking out opportunities, and that's why. 155, uh, we could break through there. We're now above the 50-period moving average, like we talk about on the show all the time. Um, and, and like IBM is breaking down the low side, this is breaking to the upside, so that's why we like it. 153 and change, we'll take out the stick if it does get there, but right now, guys, a 50 cent spread, so 153 is not far away. I'm just debating, like, do I want this one, do I want Roku, or do I want uh, the next, oh, no, it's gonna be uh, Nikola is another idea that we do have, that's gonna be coming up soon, but uh, I do like Eli Lilly through 153. All right, guys, let's talk uh, about the uh, shippers here, FedEx and UPS, both with big days yesterday. Uh, into recent high territory, both mentioned in a note from Deutsche Bank suggesting that uh, this could be a record-setting holiday season for both FedEx and UPS uh, because of uh, the pandemic and everyone staying at home, uh, not getting together with family. So uh, FedEx up about 2% uh, here in the pre-market, not a heck of a lot of activity. However, uh, we are very, very close. I just checked. It's 274.66 is all-time highs for uh, FedEx. So within shouting distance of that, another one that looks really good on the daily chart. Yeah, it looks fantastic on the daily chart, but on the level two, it doesn't look that great because the current spread, uh, if you literally apply that spread and, and, and then take it to the offer, uh, that almost $2 spread, that actually gets you to the high. I mean, it just closed up right now, but uh, 16,000 in, in volume is incredibly small um, uh, for FedEx, and I'm not gonna touch that with a 10-foot pole. You're seeing $1.50 moves here on essentially nothing, like just you know five shares here and 20 shares there and uh, is causing big time moves. What I will have a quick look at, however, is this level, if you go back, and this is just a one minute chart, but you can see all afternoon, uh, yesterday, right at like 267.50 and then closing just above that price. So, I mean, that's gonna be an obvious area of support in the event that there is a reversal potentially off of that all time high. If it finds any resistance there, uh, uh, then let's see if we can't uh, fade, you know, well not fade it, sorry, but uh, look to be a, a dip buyer through that price. As far as a breakout long, I'll probably wait for the all-time high to get made on volume uh, if I can, or if volume picks up and wants to hold something like this, the afternoon top from yesterday. Those would be ways to get into FedEx. I'm just not seeing anything that I love right about now. That uh, other one that we have, OEG here, uh, that fading uh, in a little bit here, going to take off some for a 10% win. Uh, off of 125 to 130 area, uh, another one of those gap up and retracement plays. 
Uh, okay, uh, I see some chat uh, here, and sure, Brendan, we can do that. Uh, I do see some chat here on Ford. And Randy, you're stealing my thunder. I gave everybody Ford, I think it was when you were here, Randy, Monday, uh, when Ford was down at 7 bucks, and uh, now we're at 7.30. So uh, once again, guys, someone said something. Oh, no, it was actually below. It was, is this Monday right here? Yeah, it was below $7. Uh, we gave this to you. I told you, but it was breaking out right now. So, yeah, Ford, don't steal my thunder, Randy. Uh, I gave everybody Ford there on Monday, so hopefully you were uh, into that name. I also did dipped into Palantir yesterday at $10.10. Uh, Greg knows about that one as well. So I saw someone say that if we get 2K likes, I'll manage someone's portfolio for a week. That won't be happening. Uh, I don't have the license to do that, but hey, if you want me to, uh, send me a note on Twitter and I'll uh, help you guys out for sure. Uh, but yeah, Ford looks like it's going to be a good one, man. I mean, I do like Ford uh, making moves to the upside. We do, we do know why. Randy's putting notes in there. I gave it to you on, on Monday. Uh, the electric vehicles, they're making moves there. The F-150 is going to be huge. And Mon Monstrous Ford trucks hold their value uh, in the aftermarket, so I think that's going to be absolutely uh, a monstrous. I did talk about, now that we're in the autos, quickly, man, we only have five minutes here, and I know we want to get to square again, um, but 26-20 here. I like Nicola breaking out again, man. If we can break above, uh, let's watch what happens off the open, but I want to take Nicola long uh, at some point, Brandon. All right, guys, yeah, like, uh, real quick here, before we get to Arun and the overall market, just wanted to show this headline on square again, uh, out right at 9 o'clock. A lot more people with us now than uh, when we first talked about this, Square announcing a $50 million Bitcoin purchase, the CFO saying uh, there's a potential for uh, uh, far more significance in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency markets in the future. So uh, Square, yeah, take it away, Sean. Square, look, I, I've been a big buyer of Square. We did this yesterday um, in our investment when we did our, our, our lesson there at 1 p.m. I, I love Square. I love what they're doing. Uh, Jack Dorsey, everything uh, going upside. Square's been a big, big one. Uh, them and PayPal just continue to be good. Like $50 million Bitcoin uh, investment. I think that's uh, not huge, no. but it is nice to see that Square's getting into that game and at least talking it up a little bit. They were, the thing about Square is if you do know the stock like I do a little bit, they've already been talking. They were one of the first uh, applications to talk Bitcoin, to talk cryptocurrency. We're talking like a year and a half ago when, when sort of crypto uh, was going nuts and Square was talking about that, adding it to their platform, taking it as payment. Obviously, cryptocurrency is kind of faded out a little bit. Bitcoin really hasn't. I mean, it's holding pretty strong between 10 and 11,000 per coin here in the U.S. Bitcoin is actually more stable than U.S. equities, so you can look that up if you want. Um, but right here, Square, guys, uh, big, huge run to the upside. I've been loving this thing for a very long time. I did dump some of my position right around here when we got to that 50-period moving average. I can't be disciplined and not follow my own rules. Uh, but right there, we did get some out, and I'm super happy to see uh, how high we're going. And yesterday, thanks for bringing that up, Brendan, we did hammer square yesterday right here man 18150 enjoyed the run up so uh, we'll look to do the same thing here 18450 is now the high but Look, there's just so many names today. I don't know what to do. Uh, we have so many on watch. Nikola, Roku. Now we have this one, Square. We have uh, Eli, Lily, AMD I want to trade. Ay, ay, ay. All right, guys, let's go to the uh, overall market here. We'll bring a rune in, have a, a look at the futures. We are kind of grinding back to the upside. Uh, it's another day, Arun, and we're still at 3,400. Yeah, we got above 34.25, I think was the key level for me, is that's what drove the market down when we had that, uh, that news come out and it kind of just fell off a cliff, right? Now we're back above that and we're sitting and we've tested down below. After getting above 34.25, we've gone underneath and tested down into the 15s and 20s. It seems like there's a decent amount of support here. Only issue I have, I really do like the long. I've got bids out in front of 20 waiting to get long. I don't want to step in just yet because I do think there's some activity from overnight in the 30 area, 30 to 35 area that I, I don't want to step in front of. Of course, if it goes that, I have to make some adjustments in terms of risk. But I am looking for a long. The long that I want is in front of 20 with 95 as a stop. Uh, if I can't get that, then if the, market's, uh, if the market pushes past 35, then I'm, not, I'm going to have to readjust and figure out what my new level is going to be. For the moment, though, I'm... I'm expecting the market to, well, I'm not expecting, I'm hoping the market does come down and give me the fill. I, you know, I just sat down at my desk a few minutes later than the, when I could have potentially gotten the fill. Unfortunately, I am out of position on that one, even though that is the trade that I want. So 95 is a level I'm looking on the downside. And below that, I'm looking at 55. 33.55 is below that. 33.95 is the level that I like to work with, with 20 as a level of where I'm looking to get in. All right, great. Uh, thanks so much, Arun. We'll check back in uh, with Arun coming up tomorrow. Uh, once again, before the open, just saw a headline, guys, real quick on uh, Amazon. Uh, they are looking to be the first out of the gate with uh, an all-electric 
uh, delivery truck that was designed and manufactured by Rivian. So uh, one of the only EV makers yet to either have a SPAC or an actual stock to look at. So Amazon uh, up 1% here uh, anyways today. But uh, yeah, interesting uh, little story there. Looks like they're going to uh, get this truck into, uh, into or get it working very, very quickly here. Uh, speaking of work, uh, Workhorse down 5%. Now, only about 30, 40 seconds till the open. I know some of you guys have been looking at it, uh, talking about it in the chat here. Uh, watch out if it can't hold this 22 area. Uh, there was a bit of a dip down uh, 23rd, 24th at that time, and it got down to 20 even. I think that's going to be the possible base of support. Uh, I'm looking at this 24 and any retrace trace, uh, for a short opportunity on Workhorse uh, under a lot of pressure this morning, uh, just continuing to see if it, it'll uh, break through that low of the day, which is right at that 22 even. But it is belt time. Uh, lots to get to, of course, uh, to be watching. A few shorts already on, watching that Regeneron, uh, and of course, uh, you're going to see uh, some of those big names like Roku uh, come through. Maybe the top, but there's three, two, and one. Blurry in all black again. Where's the green? We need that market green, Blurry. Got to get that green outfit going. We've got purple on today. Uh, okay, Eli Lilly, we're going to watch that 153. Like a big spread hasn't opened yet, so uh, we're watching Eli Lilly. There goes Nicola taking that long. So uh, we're long Nicola right now. Uh, 2635. So uh, we'll see if what, where this wants to go from here, but we have Nicola right now in our pocket. Uh, probably going to give it back down. Even 2590, this little level here, 2578 uh, or so, but let's see how high uh, this one wants to go. Oops, uh, and that is Nicola only position I have on right now. Also watching Palantir hopefully through 10.50, guys. Already doing some backflips, getting some further rollover on DPW right through that low a day, 2.95. Got a bunch of shares out on the south side of it, so last out was just there at 2.85. Uh, gonna bank that 20 cents there, and I talked about this, uh, 2.55 close, so not as much room for it to continue to flush to the downside here. Uh, also in the money, OEG and OPTT, uh, but I wanna make sure we're tracking what's going on over in Regeneron. Uh, that one we're looking for very specifically uh, a move back into that like 616 area uh, off of the open. It, it looks like it, it was one little tick and it got like 50 cents away from that 16, which would have been the first entry for me. I like 17 better to give it like three bucks, uh, three or four dollars to that 20 range and 22 being the top. That's five dollars worth of range. Uh, very, very thinly traded so far. No, not a lot of volume on Regeneron. I think maybe that little bot or sell into that uh, uh, pop at the open might have come and gone. And oops, we did it again. There it is, Nicola right now uh, to the moon uh, again for us. So a nice little trade here. Uh, we got to get out or else it doesn't matter, but uh, there it is. Bang, bang, and more bangs. Uh, nice little upside move here. Look at this long. Boom, 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 boom. Big trade here happening for us right now on uh, Nicola. So we gave that one to you. I hope you have this with us. Nice little trade here. Long at 35. Right now in the money, 45 cents. Big trade on Nicola. Spicy to start the day, guys. Let's just keep Mama this train going. And it's going to have to be a buy the dip on Roku. It already broke 225. Uh, already broke the pre-market top 223. Uh, I'm going to go long in front of that little uh, pre-market high and see if we can't take this little dip. If it breaks uh, above this now new made, newly made high at two, uh, 225.37, I'll maybe take another shot to add to the position. Otherwise, I want to be defending the previous uh, pre-market level, uh, that 223 even. But Roku, it just feels like it uh, continues to run. Uh, I got 24, 20, uh, 224, 27 to the long side. Let's see how far we can make Roku go. Yeah, we've been talking about uh, Roku for a while there and uh, should have had it, but again, we just take out the state. Wow, 220, yeah, 222 uh, we wrote down there for Roku. Wow, what a pop that's been. Great stock there, Roku still going. Uh, out. And look at Nikola, man. Now, new highs. Dollar in the money on Nikola. Big shares. Let's go. What's up, B? Uh, fuel cell, guys. Another one, little one moving uh, in the pre market here. They announced a $177 million capital raise. So, uh, big time volume alert at the open there from uh, F cell, F C E L on the NASDAQ. So they're just uh, reloading one of my charts here. I want to be able to show you. Uh, we got through uh, two, 226 and Nikola, sorry, not Nikola, Roku. Nikola on the brain, as Sean was just mentioning that one. I tried to slip some shares out at 226. Uh, 50 there for a quick $2 scalp, uh, but unfortunately didn't get that fill. It is screaming back up to that price. So that still is going to maintain, uh, be my plan. We'll take a couple of dollars on the first little trade uh, on that name. The other shorts are all starting to come in, but the firmly on my mind is Regeneron and Roku on that little breakthrough that we're seeing now. Uh, 230 would be that sort of ultimate psychological target next level up uh, on Roku if we can catch it, but this long already uh, starting to work for us here. Uh, I, I'd like to see if maybe there's a dip buy opportunity. If I get this out, which I'm assuming I will in a couple of seconds, I'd like to see if there's a dip buy opportunity at 225 uh, to be able to play the trend. We've seen how far Roku can run uh, on these moves. It would not surprise me uh, if we did see 230 in the next you know, uh, 10 minutes or so.
Yeah, we love Roku. Uh, okay, Nicola, just getting some more out here at the top side. Uh, don't want to let this one get back down. We've already we've crushed it. It's been a great trade. There it is. Bang, bang. Out some 2730s there as well. So uh, Roku just continues to be a monster. We'll continue to do that uh, to the upside. Square, uh, unfortunately, like we were saying, Daryl and everybody else uh, there in the chat, we can't get everything. But Square does come back to the downside. So now we got to watch out. Where is it making back a base? Me, yeah. I mean, it's making a base right here about 183. Uh, so if we could pick some up down there, that would be good. Uh, now we do have a base to make a move possibly to the upside again 184 46 or so what up B? Uh, the uh, semiconductor showing strength early on here on semiconductor up nine percent here on monster volume through 2540 their recent highs uh starboard out this morning saying that uh, this company is undervalued uh with an upgrade and a price target increase guys so uh, we'll give the Yahoo Yeehaw action uh, coming from Brennan over here. Uh, we just got the $2 winner on here. And obviously, it would have been a heck of a lot more if you catch that break at 223 on Roku. Uh, we'll see if there's a dip by in that 25 or 225 range, but not married to even dollar prices. I like to see where it does turn around. Catch it on the way back up, and uh, 230 would be that next target. Nothing too, uh, too scientific about that, guys. It's just one of those things where it's an even dollar a round number. It's a 225 area break. Uh, OEG just loaded up, uh, thankfully. Uh, worked off of this level here uh, on a bit of a retracement on this name. It was on the watch list, of course, so uh, you can follow along. We didn't quite get to that one. It is starting to roll over. Uh, this stock uh, is going to face a dollar uh, even break before it gets to my target around 90 cents. So I'm anticipating there's going to be some buying that usually steps up into this uh, before it becomes a penny stock again, literally. Uh, I'll see if I can't take some off in front of it. Already have 122 short. Looking to work this one all the way down to a buck even and then hopefully down to about 90 cents. So another big winner here uh, to the short side on OEG. Brennan, what do you got, bud? Uh, big spike here in Age X Therapeutics. Another little one moving today. AGE on the NYSE Arc Exchange, 180%. Uh, just uh, came from $2 to 250 all in uh, one order, it seemed like there. So heads up, this one might be uh, uh, set for a halt. I was just watching level two there. Uh, not yet, but uh, looking like it might want to halt here for age, guys. I mean, look at the NASDAQ coming right to the downside here. Yeah, so you got to watch out if you do have some of the logs. I mean, we, that's why part of the reason why we're getting out uh, of our Nikola right now. Uh, so, I don't know. We got some out there at 50. And then look at this, man. 75s, 80s, dollar, uh, $2, 30. That's a dollar winner right there. So I did want to give a big shout out also, man. We do the show for free every single day. Get our watch list. But what up to Ralph, man? You continue to be an all-star. Thank you so much. That's a Roku call out right there. You're, you're super welcome for that. I hope you guys uh, were able to make just as much money on that one uh, as, as we did here. So good name there. That's Roku. Roku, uh, and thank you for that, Ralph. Uh, the only position I have on right here, we did take a little bit uh, of Bitcoin here going long off the open there on that news. So this is just GBTC 1130 uh, running it all the way up. So that was a good out for us. Big time win there. But uh, the stock that we're obviously, you know, the largest in right now is this one. And we took out the big stick. Like we told you, I mean, uh, this is, you can see here, Nikola is the only one. I don't know if you can see that. It, there, kind of. It's the only one circled there. Can you see that? N NKL? It doesn't matter. Get out of here. Uh, I can't zoom that in. But uh, Nikola, the only one circled on the board there and uh, that's what we do man it's money bags uh right there I, I you know we could be done trading but it's only 9 37 so uh still a little bit of time to go here let's find some more winners for you right now yeah, just turned around at 227.50 on Roku. Still a couple bucks in the money as they retest back to 226. IBM just caught a bit of a bottom off that 130, a very, very quick one uh, right here, right at the open. You had to be locked and loaded, already in four positions at that time, so not going to force it on IBM, which I didn't like as much as Roku. Uh, but that 136, uh, called it for a reason here, guys. There's some consolidation in front of it. Uh, if we can break back through, I think there's a bit of a long... Uh, there's a rollover shot if you want because you can use that same breakout uh, order, which I like to do a lot of times, uh, to catch a bit of a, a roll here, give a, like a dollar worth of risk in case it comes halfway back. Uh, but I'll always reverse to the long in this situation at that 136 breakout uh, either way. But the fact that we're slowing down and the market's coming in, uh, I got to try this setup. Why? Because it's one of the ones that's worked for me in the past. OEG continues to slide towards a buck. I'll get out and make sure I have just about half or maybe slightly less than that in the event that $1 does break. You can't get too greedy with these. Uh, these penny stocks when they start to come in guys uh, sometimes they found irrational bids uh, everywhere yeah, I'm going to do, I think I'm just going to uh, right now, the Nasdaq is going down a little bit too much. We'll get out of some Roku and now we'll hold five, sorry, Roku, Nikola. Uh, so we'll hold 5% backside on this name uh, and then we'll wait to see what else is going to happen. Okay, Plantier or Palantir, PLTR. We did get into that one uh, yesterday in my own account at 1010. Uh, we talked about that. I do like Ford as well right now uh, for a long term, but this one comes the other way. I was looking at Palantir to the upside through 1050. Uh, that was a call that we were looking at right there. But right now we are right at this 1020 mark that was pretty key yesterday so we could watch out for a 10 20 break uh, to the upside and then you have 10 15 on the downside
side. So uh, that could be something to watch out for here. Uh, kind of surprised this is going southbound. I did see the CEO on some other station today. I can't remember what the station's name is. Uh, but we will wait to see if Palantir may be fading off of those comments. Still up that 2%. Obviously a relatively new stock, uh, only a week old. So we'll have to give Palantir some room to run. But I do like it breaking through 20. Let's take a tester at 21. Yeah, I'll give you guys to DPW, which I'll just, I just took some more shares off of that one for a 30 penny winner, about like that 10% return. That AGE over on the Amex, formerly the Amex, uh, continues to run to the upside. Now, this one could face halts on some breakouts. I would watch out for that, but it's 260. I'm looking to see if it can be uh, a possible squeeze. Uh, it's sort of worth noting, it did, it has made some moves in the past up towards some of these levels, guys. So if you go back far enough on the daily chart, uh, all I'm looking at first is going to be about 3 to 310. And then from there, it's like a four even level in the event that you get a bit of a break uh, we're back to 227 in roku so that's uh, about two and a half to three in the money again i'm looking for 230s as a target Brennan, what do you got, buddy? Uh, just watching uh, AT&T popping up here on a volume scanner. It was down on the morning, but uh, showing some relative strength. Uh, 2850, a bit of a level for this in the pre-market, also on the daily chart, but not seeing anything significant on headlines for uh, AT&T, but uh, decent volume, guys. AT&T, okay. not one I usually look at, but uh, I'll slay some dragons over here, and this one is going to be DPW. Uh, again, of course, on the watch, uh, watch list I mentioned off the bat because... Uh, this one was running right towards the previous close already. It had come in 40 or 50 cents, so it was less of an opportunity uh, to catch a larger percentage win. That's why I'm more aggressive getting out of this one, uh, heading into the previous close at 255, uh, it, just taking out some 20 to 25 cent wins here as we scalp on the way down. And we're finding resistance on Roku. Now, uh, it, it, it's, I say resistance, it's kind of like a loose term because the last couple of weeks uh, there really hasn't been a heck of a lot, but there is still some consolidation happening around this 227 mark. I did already take some out for a $2 win here. Uh, this was not the breakout trade. Had to actually catch it on a pullback, uh, a bit of a dip buy, uh, which usually would be the second part of a trade. It happens to be the first this time. Uh, 230 is just going to be that psychological level I'll look to get out, take two, take five. Uh, that's the way I'm going to work this trade. I did get into IBM. I talked about that 136 level. I still am going to look at a breakthrough there. However, uh, it did bounce off that 130 and then stall out in front. So I'll play this little retracement trade. Uh, if it goes halfway, that'll give you like that 133 area. Well, technically like 132.50 or so uh, where I'm trying to park in order. Uh, that's just halfway between 130 and that 135 we turned. It's 136 where I look at a breakout uh, on IBM, maybe back into some of these pre-market lows. Okay, guys, Palantir, we're long right now, uh, like we, we're trying to get long. Uh, we got long there, 09, so we're at 15 right now. 16, 17, 18, we're going to go long at 21 again. But a nice little win, come on, give it to me. Give me 10 cents right now. Let's take that 1% right now off Palantir if we can get it. Uh, but right now, a nice little win here to start the morning, man. We're three for three. Boom, there goes Palantir out right there. That's 10 cents, 9 cents. We got 18s. Thought I'd put 19s, but there we go. A nice little 9 cent win to start here on Palantir. And again, a $10 stock, right? We'll take 9 cents uh, on that one, and then we'll watch to see what happens here uh, to the upside. Remember, man, you got to take shares if you're going to trade these names and uh, try to scalp it. But this is nice, man. Top to bottom. Let's go, Brendan. Uh, cannabis name starting to go. Speaking of, 5.5% uh, here. Afria to the upside. Nice uh, look here on volume as well. Uh, not seeing much in the way of news. They did announce they're going to have their latest quarterly results October 15th uh, that was out aftermarket yesterday but uh, big pop here for Afria guys I mean weed Batman is in the building I told you guys I have a tweet I actually looked back at it and I retweeted it today it was October 3rd or something uh, that I said cannabis plays uh, are back and that we should be invested in cannabis so that's what I'm in and look at this name uh, you can look at any of these names uh, what was the one you just gave I uh, will give Kron right now you gave Afria we'll talk about Kron uh, as well check out the daily chart here some of these marijuana plays man this is where literally I mean, you can see the tweets. We tweet... Come on, Chart. It's been so bad. Uh, but we tweeted it down here, 490, 493, uh, or so 570 right now uh, for Kron, or 560 for Kron. So hopefully uh, you guys are enjoying that one as well. Uh, Nicola, so we're out of our Palantir. Nicola, we have 5% left. We told you that one. This is a big win right there. Um, and we are holding the rest. We're going to get out right now as it breaks back down below the bottom. We do have some size here, uh, but we are going to get out right now. Uh, the momentum, we run that to the upside. Great trade. Really proud of that one. I hope you guys had Nicola with us, and I just gave that to you. Well-structured, easy outs, no problem. And now we'll wait to see if 25 breaks to get out of the rest.
Uh, going to go over a couple of names here. One, heavy action for me to get out of uh, some of this trade in OEG. And I told you about that $1 mark. It's all psychological uh, when you talk about some of these small caps in that, that $1 even area and penny stocks data. So if it comes back up, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to give it to 135 140 area like before. Uh, I'll definitely be taking it off that 125 That's where the move terminated uh, on the open when it tried to go back up. So tighten up the stop. It's close to break even. IBM, I think I got greedy here. I was looking for like $2 to 250 on the on that little pullback short uh, it's starting to come back in so uh, that could be good for the possible breakout through 136 uh, but for that short trade it means I could have taken a buck and unless it rolls over here I might be staring at a hit on the short trade and then working into the long Roku's trying to pull back it got to 228 uh, 30 or so as long as it holds 225 I want to stick uh, with the with the rest of these shares to the long side long at 224 here I really would like to see IBM come in and test that 132 uh, to give a better a better win you know, the thing is, normally uh, IBM doesn't have the volatility where you would uh, you'd, you'd fail to take a dollar winner, but it has already put in a ten dollar move. So obviously, you can change your expectations uh, relative to how it normally trades here. Brennan, what do you got? Uh, ATEC, Alpha Tech Holdings, little medical equipment maker back in small cap land here. Uh, they came out this morning with uh, preliminary uh, third quarter results that were better than expected. So uh, big time gap, 35 percent here for ATEC on volume, guys. Oh wow, that one was oh, that was on the list yesterday too as well. I was watching that stock. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have an order on IBM, but in the event that it does try to turn around right here uh, off of this last dip, it was like 133. If that ends up holding, I'm just gonna manually try and see if we can't get out of these shares. I'm not gonna sit here and fail to take the dollar a dollar fifty out of this uh, short trade off that 136 level. And again, this is a, probably a reason why you should pay attention uh, to the watch list because. Uh, really only gave two numbers when it came to IBM, 130 and 136. Bottom of that retracement move, 130.01. Top here, 130.55. So uh, both those coming into play. It didn't matter which direction you liked it. Uh, a couple of decent numbers uh, to look at here uh, on IBM. I'm going to take this short off because it's starting to round out just a little bit. And I feel like you got to take a buck seventy on IBM. It, it's kind of ridiculous. It almost never does this kind of volatility. I still like a shot at a 136 break. And then if it can hold that 130, uh, maybe there's another dip buying opportunity. We missed the first one. We'll see if we can't get the second one. But for now, let's do some backflips over the IBM win. Buck seventy there, Brennan. What do you got? Uh, we've been uh, talking about some strength in uh, Boeing over the past couple of sessions. This is Spirit Aerosystems up 3.75%. Uh, playing a little catch-up, possibly. Obviously, their, their biggest uh, manufacturer of uh, components for aircrafts, 3.8% to the upside. $20, bit of a problem, though, uh, for SPR, guys. All right, uh, new, new position alert. Uh, so we got an idea here. We're back into Eli Lilly. So we'll wait to see what this one wants to do. Uh, we are long bang, taking some out right now, long 55s. Uh, I, I was looking for 153s to come through. Uh, we take a little bit of shares right now. It seems that it's pretty strong. We can hold it all the way to the backside, but I'd like to get some out now uh, so that we don't have to worry too much about it. So Eli Lilly right here, we're waiting at 50s and uh, 64s right now. We can get some out. Uh, it's not printing me, but we are sitting there on NASDAQ. So we'll wait to get some more out there on Eli Lilly. There it goes. Yes, nice little win there, man. We are on fire today, guys. Big time trading day. Let's go. And uh, right to that buck mark, OEG. So we get the IBM win. We come right over to a small cap, and we're going to start taking even more shares out in front of a buck. The ultimate target's still going to be 90 cents. I think it has a shot to get there. Uh, a couple of things I think might happen before. One, I think there might be a bounce off of a dollar. I think we can get some in the 115 uh, range if we do get that bounce. Uh, and on the way to that 90 cents, uh, again, the previous close is 83. Uh, but I'll start taking it out off 90. Uh, if you had a, you, you did have a bit of a level there in the afternoon on the stock yesterday, so can't ignore that. Roku is pulling back in. It's still in the money, a buck fifty, but I said I'd give this pull back to two twenty-five. If it can't hold that, I'll just take my profits and run. This is like day one million for this run. At some point, it might actually turn around. I don't want to get caught turning a winner into a loser. Uh, yeah, we're not having any losers over here, so look at it. I mean, look at Eli Lilly banging that one to the upside, guys. 152.50. Boom, we hit the sire and let you know that there's a new trade alert. And uh, yeah, there's a big one right there. So Eli Lilly goes right into the money uh, for us. Nicola also out on that break to the downside. So we talked about that. Stay disciplined, young fella, uh, and you will make money. So there it goes, man. Nice little trade here on Nicola. We got a good one on Luck and Coffee right now. A uh, long, long, long and getting out right now. Luck and Coffee, watch out, man. A big name on the pink sheets. What up, Beef? Uh, things with strength in retailers once again today. This is Target. Just saw 1.5%. Not a lot of action here so far on Target, but uh, Deutsche Bank out with a uh, price target increase for uh, Target and also a positive note on the entire group. So another name here with a nice-looking daily chart, guys. 
Oh, uh, no. There goes that AGE once again. Still no halts to the upside because uh, you know stocks don't halt anymore. But this 320, uh, 315 level, that was sort of the first look that we're watching. It's trying to roll over here. This is the strong small cap today. Uh, looking like it's the strongest one I've seen, at least to the upside. If it breaks here, nothing much until you get to about $4. Uh, so it's got to be interesting on a 315 break, uh, 320 area, depending on what you like. I'll take a shot, a uh, momentum long through 315. However, if this is where it wants to fail, uh, there was at least a level here. Uh, the volume is starting to get a little crazy. It's almost at 100 million uh, before we even get to 10 o'clock. So this one is absolutely nuts. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a small cap and the micro cap actual name here. Uh, just 21 million float. So we're talking about 4x the float before we even hit 950. Things are going crazy here. 315 just broke. So no rollover through that price. Uh, if you can't beat them, let's join them. It's trying to make some consolidation above. The bid holds above here. And I'll take money, a quick shot money, at a long, money, money, which it literally money, just did. Money, uh, so I'm money, long for money. the first time at 321. I'll give it maybe back to like a 293 area as $4 would be that next level to the upside on AGE. The squeeze could be on here, guys. I don't know if any of you guys have luck in coffee or the ability to trade this name, but uh, it's going nicely in the money for me, man. 40 cents right now, uh, upside on luck in coffee. Be careful, man. That's just one of those trades. Uh, we do the money, money, money because Palantir, guys, uh, we do go long at 1020. Uh, I took a little bit too many shares there, uh, so we have been getting some out 21, and then we took some out for flat. Uh, so now we'll wait uh, on this one, bumping back to the upside. Give it only back to here, man, 1016. Hoping for a Palantir run. Should have still had those, but really happy with this. Let's see how high this thing wants to go we have it in case it does go but we're 40 cents in the money on luck and coffee and right now flat on palantir eli lily monster everything's been going great guys what's up beef? i just saw a note here on uh, i mean it's not going to affect space but uh, virgin hyperloop has picked west virginia to test their high-speed transport system uh, obviously not the same company as space, but uh, space a little bit weak this morning uh, did gap up but uh, back to the downside basically where we were yesterday guys Virgin Galactic on the move once again. Uh, just another name to go back to uh, that AGE here. Uh, still holding consolidation at 320, so that's a positive sign. There's no sell-off around that key 315 level just yet. I'll take some shares off in front of 350, as you know is going to be the custom here on the way to that $4 mark. Uh, but right now, there's a bit of a battle being waged uh, at this quarter. Uh, if the buyers win, I think we're going to be sitting pretty. I'm still going to give it to like 290 and no further than that. Just to quickly check in on the airlines, uh, you know, had a lot of successful trades in here, but there's not a lot of action on AAL. It did slide into the downside with the market, but for now, simply following that market. And if we get any news on any kind of stimulus or anything specific to the airlines, you got to watch out. I mean, an idea is, I mean, any kind of move on volume that goes like 10, 15 pennies in one shot uh, can be a possible breakout at any moment on any one of these airlines. All right. Uh, just looking here, we did. Uh, unfortunately, this does slip down. We get out of their last 10% there on Eli Lilly, but Eli Lilly a winner. Uh, okay, so the only one we're really looking at right now, uh, the only position I have on is this Palantir. Uh, just to give you guys an update, we did get out of that Luckin' Coffee at the high side right there, 1020, right before VWAP, so good out for us on that. Come on, Palantir. Uh, where's our out going to be, you say? Uh, we'll probably get some out if we get... Nah, forget it. I'm, not, I'm just going to ignore this view up. We're going to go higher. Uh, let's go 1030s or so. We can get some out at 1030. That'd be great. Right now, we're long 1021. We were long down here. We got long again. And now, look, we're enjoying the ride to the high side. So your boy's not going to stop today. Not much of a roller coaster today, man. It's just been straight goods uh, for us. So we'll wait to see here. Uh, it's been good. Bitcoin, Luck and Coffee, Eli Lilly, Nicola for the win, and then Palantir. So uh, we're not Trading many names, but we're giving you the levels and we're telling you when we like them. So hopefully uh, you can enjoy some victories with us and make some victory laps at some point here. Uh, Square, eh, wish we were doing something else. We'd, we'd come back to you if you were actually moving. Uh, Beyond Meat as well, looking at that name, 194, 195, trying to go, man. Uh, Nice bottom, 192 and change. We get back down to there. Maybe we look at it, but right now, nada. Uh, let's just work and, and hope that this Palantir can go to the north side here. Let's get some out. It just did stop at VWAP, so we could take some 24s. Let's, let's do a little bit. Uh, a couple of pennies away from being five for six, which would be a good foul shooting percentage, but that AGE starting to come back in. I didn't hang on uh, past that 133 on IBM, uh, but it is still consolidating at this level. A couple of things here. Still looking at that 136 for potential break. Still watching this 130 uh, area to that downside if we can get a secondary dip by. Uh, 290 just held on AGE, but I still think uh, it might turn into a short trade. 315 was a price area that I identified uh, on the daily chart. It got past there, but uh, not by much. 
Uh, but only about 10 cents or so, so the rollover could be on in age. It's up 250% at some point. This gets out of hand. Uh, 290 is holding for now, so the long break is potentially still on if it makes another test at that top. I'd watch out if you went short. Uh, I'm not often long in one of these names, uh, but this one was entirely too strong when I came in and sat down in the morning. All right, Brent, guys, what do you got? Uh, we get, look, guys, we have this rabbit foot right here. I just put it in the chat. I mean, Eli Lilly uh, right now going, breaking through 153, and we got that, and we get some out there at 25, actually 29. Uh, now, boom, now up to 34, 30. Look at these Eli Lilly longs, guys. 152.50, 153. Now we're at 153.50. Brendan, I mean, this is what we're doing. We'll slay dragons. We'll throw it over to you. But it's been a big morning here, man. Yeah. Eli Lilly, dollar in the money. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, uh, Lilly and Regeneron still uh, very, very strong, both on the watch list, guys. Uh, have a look at some gold names here. Just brought up this one. Yamana yeah, Gold, 5.8%. Uh, just took out day highs there on uh, decent volume. $6 could be a problem for this, but uh, we saw gold prices moving to the upside in the pre-market, guys. And bang, Eli Lilly, guys, upside. You want to talk about watch list? I've traded everything there. Palantir, not on the watch list. Nicola, not on the watch list. Eli Lilly on the watch list. So here we go, guys. Nice little move to the upside here with Eli Lilly. Again, you could rewind the tape. Like, I, tell, I told you, I told you guys, and this is the one thing you've asked for. Sean, how do we know when you guys are actually putting on real shares? Look, I have no problem telling you. I told you in the pre-market that if 153 broke, that we'd be going ham. So that's exactly what we're doing, guys. Here's Eli Lilly. Bang! Dollar plus in the money since we called this 152. We gave you 153. So, hey, look, this is what we're doing. Less positions and giving you guys the goods. It's what you want. It's a spicy meatball. Mama Let's go. 153.68. 68 cent win. Let's take a little bit off. Uh, off of the uh, watch list from a couple of days ago, we always talk about this. Just because it's not on the watch list that day, uh, if you saw it a couple of days ago, if you saw it the week before, and OPTT has been one of those names, look for those secondary plays. And this actually was mentioned uh, uh, by Brennan. We talked about this when we released a video or shot a video yesterday about A-plus setups. And that day two, uh, if you find a level uh, of failure point, and right here off that 275, 280, uh, it was support all day long in OPTT. We gap lower is the retracement from a dollar. It went up 300% short off of this level. It's starting to fade off. I still have this one on and I'm going to start getting out uh, in front of the low of the day. And once we break here, this 240, you're looking at like $2 to 220. There's your return guys. It's one of those situations where you don't just throw it away because it stopped the parabolic move. You note that little dip down in the weakness at the top. Uh, and if uh, AGE is doing it right now, uh, I'm going to be a fool on this one because I just got out at 290 and I just saw for the second time 100,000 share buyers. Sorry, that's, that's going to be ACB. Uh, 100,000 share buyers on this level too, stepping up uh, randomly on ARCA. Uh, I saw it a couple of times on the way in. It still broke 290 on the downside. If this buyer maintains, there might be another long in AGE. It might not actually be done. I'm out of my long for my first loser of the day, but wow, this stock is very, very strong, guys. Watch out. I'm just tweeting this out for you guys on Eli Lilly. It's just been such a banger. Uh, double shots in and, uh, you know, follow us all on Twitter, at Trader TV, Sean. At Hello, Palantir. Boom! Everything moving today. I can't even send out tweets. Uh, things are going so hyper right now. Uh, e uh, Palantir, beautiful out there at 28. Look, long, long, long. I mean, I don't know what. which ones should I tweet out. Who knows? Uh, we'll see if we get some more out here at 27. I still have, uh, you know pictures of it coming up here to 1030 1034 not just because we invested in this name no 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 uh but because we actually believe in palantir here we go 1029 1030 look guys thank you so much russell wilson is cooking they say what's chef russell cooking what am i barbecuing up here we're barbecuing up winners let sean cook guys let sean cook what's up b uh one from the uh, agricultural group guys ctva up six percent uh, starboard activist investor starboard uh, taking a position in this name, saying it sees uh, big time upside. So uh, almost 6% here, just broke 32 for CTVA, guys. From CTVA over to uh, another, I want to go back to Beyond Meat. Of course, there was that news that had come out uh, at 9 o'clock. As Thank you mentioned, you. Brendan, they continuously like to do this. Approaching that 200 level, it just broke through the high uh, at 196 here. Uh, on breakout territory to 200, I talked about this uh, taking a shot. I wasn't looking to dip by Beyond Meat, but I am looking uh, to see if we do catch a bit of a seller uh, at that 200 even area. That AGE still, between 290 and 325, I see a couple of people talking, but I'm not... I'm not touching it in that range. I want it to break out. Uh, hopefully, it's, if it's to the upside, we'll take a long through once again. I think $4 the next target. Uh, but if it gets down, let's call it like 275 or so. I want that short. 
having some trouble on that breakout and beyond meat all bets are off at 200 uh, if it fails this 196 area breakout that could spell a pullback and beyond meat uh, the failure to hold above that price so let's watch this very very closely uh, beyond been another runner like roku at some point uh, you do see some profit taking come in maybe today is that day Guys, salute to everybody today. I hope everyone's having a good day. Yeah, good shot there, guys. Day trade the world. Look, it's too bad it's an empty floor here. Um, you know, we, we have a few traders in as, as we continue to deal with this uh, virus. I did want to lift a cup up uh, to everybody today. I mean, it's been such a fantastic day uh, here today. I don't even know uh, what else we can do. We will look for more stocks for you, uh, of course. Right now, Long Palantir, you can see uh, on the screen. I'm just going to take a little sip of coffee here. A nice little five for five day happening right now. We're at the highest spot we've been at all day long. We've crushed Eli Lilly for you. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us. Get our watch list every single day that you can. It's just been such a big day. We have a lot of fun things planned as well uh, for you guys. You know, it, coming up, Valeria's been doing a kick-ass job. So has Brendan. Uh, there's some new tech pieces coming. We don't want to spoil that. Uh, but when that comes, it's going to be big, man. And what we want you to do is... Share, 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 right? Share this, like it. We had, what, 2,200 likes or something yesterday? I don't know if we'll get there today, but um, again, the problem is YouTube, right? Some days we get shown, some days we don't. We'll figure that out and come right back uh, with that. But uh, the best show, obviously, on YouTube, that's what I think. Not only that, but it's free, guys. So please, if you can support it, do as much as you guys can. Let's go. I see you, Daryl, man. You're my boy, Daryl, uh, on the chat, man. And uh, look, great trading minds think alike, and I'm happy to have uh, a bunch of you on the chat as well. I have seven, 18 years' experience here. Uh, I've been born on a prop floor, right? So my first job, we're here. We're trading for you. Never thought we'd be hosting a YouTube show, but if you like it, give us a hell yeah in the chat, and we'll keep on going for you right now, though. Come Come on, Palantir. Let's get going, big man. Uh, but right now, to another big man from one to another, and it's Mr. Wickens at the big board. Hey guys, 10 o'clock already, 30 minutes gone, just like that. A very positive board once again this morning, right across uh, all North American markets here. We're in positive territory. Uh, the S&P uh, now leading 0.7% to the upside here. In the pre-market, we saw the NASDAQ uh, leading the way, but uh, it has come back in a little bit. You can see uh, about 0.6%, uh, 0.55% there for the composite. And the 100, the Dow, 0.5% to the upside. Russell uh, in positive territory, 0.9% for small caps so far today. Uh, here in Toronto, the TSX, 0.5% down in Brazil, uh, about 0.3% for the Bovespa. Let's go over to a couple of things we were looking at in the pre-market on the watch list. Haven't mentioned it, but FedEx here. Uh, we were talking about possible strength. Pretty easy avoid there. What a flush this thing had. 271 and a half down to 266 for FedEx right off the bat. I'll sh uh, shift over here to uh, its uh, partner in crime, UPS. Same story. Big flush. 176.50 down to 173. Trying to bounce back up to where it ended the day uh, yesterday. One more to go here. Uh, we'll talk about uh, EV. Uh, Morgan Stanley picking up this company, uh, cash and stock. That's, uh, if you're wondering, huge volume, huge percent gain here, 46%. But uh, this is a buyout from uh, Morgan Stanley, guys. Back over to you. Rather large one there, but a cash in stock. So it's going to be an interesting name to watch. Uh, AGE is still holding this consolidation range, so a lot of chop action. But every single time it sells off, there has been some buy support coming in at 290. Uh, this is a 25 cent little range battle that I, I want no part of. I want to see it break out of here before I take any kind of a position. If it's going to be lower, uh, I need to see it come down to like a 250 area uh, before I would get, get out of everything. I uh, just saw a break to the downside, so I'll take the first uh, short I've had on this one. I had a little tester and got in and out very, very quickly but it was light liquidity pre-market here, guys. Uh, it's really ramped up since the open, and 120 million now in volume. I got my first short on in this name. I'm looking for that 250 area. As strong as it's been, uh, I might anticipate that there could be a bit of a long bounce on this play, even if it were to flush here on AGE. I'll take you guys back to a couple of the shorts. Uh, they're all in the money. There's really, really been no concern with either one of these, uh, but DPW is starting to slide back to the upside. I talked about this uh, 255 previous close. Take a bunch off in front of 275. If it does to want to test back up to 25, I'd take a shot, maybe reloading some of my position. It's not even above three bucks yet, so no need to do that. All my shorts were at that at or better than the $3 range, so I want to maintain that if we're going to hang on to this position. Uh, AGE starting to slide down here, but I really only think it's like 10 to 15% of a pullback that we could get. Uh, given the fact it's up 300%, that's not a heck of a lot of a move, but it's a very, very strong name so far this morning. Come on, Palantir. Cook, baby. Let's go. Cook, cook, cook. Uh, here we go. Coming to the upside here. We'll barbecue this one up. Yes, sir, Palantir. Look at this. 10, 
10 20 giving you both of these trades we told you we'll go hard at 10 20 and that's what we're doing man uh not just talking we're going here guys palantir this is what you guys want you got it uh another winner bang bang to the upside uh everything's been winning today nicola let's check back on it quickly uh 25 90 so again another good out we'll talk neil talks more to combat oh, i just missed it i talk street fighter so if you guys want to challenge uh either one of us that'd be great you got to come to toronto first and then we got to get through covid but a nice little perfect out upside right there that's why we hit that for nicola obviously i wish it was on more shares and we didn't hold that last 10 percent for a loser but look you can see the damage that's being done on the bottom right you can see how much money we're making oh i did want to give a big shout out look i said give us a hell yeah in the chat and the chat went berserk i tweeted that out so if you guys want to find yourself uh, on the chat oh yeah russell jackson you know what We'll get some bacon, man. We'll, we'll, we'll barbecue up some. You ever had barbecue bacon? It's actually really tasty. Um, you just got to watch out because the fat drips down. You got to have one of those uh, drip trays there. Thank you, Cameron. You continue to be the man. We ask for a hell yeah. And there it is. Multiple L's, multiple H's. We like that one right there. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah, everyone loves these trades, guys. Uh, and that's what we're going to keep on doing. I'm giving them to you real, real like. Uh, here we go. Look at this. Nether out. 35s. I said we had visions. We had visions of this coming to 35. Visions no more, as you can floss off the victory right there. We're going hard and we're going ham today. You guys don't know what ham is. Look that up, urbandictionary.com. Uh, you can see Well, what you that probably is, don't have to go to the Urban Dictionary to find ham. I think uh, everyone, well, most people not. know what There's that not, means. 50% don't know. For I, sure. I think a lot of people will know what ham is, but uh, Urban I, Dictionary, yep. uh, we're, at, we're there yesterday to check out a few things. Uh, one which I learned that I'm not gonna repeat, maybe. Uh, I had never heard the term until yesterday, Sean. I'm just going to be honest with you. Yeah, I'll repeat uh, it. I mean, it, is, it, it is what it, it is. It's uh, for, you know, if your ancestry, you're half black, half Asian. You, uh, someone looked it up on an article was saying Tiger Woods, Blasian. So there's an example, Blasian. Give it to you. I'm Ur here, guys. UrbanDictionary.com. Not a plug for them at all, but an interesting and fun site to, uh, to go to if you want to. Uh, I, I, I want to show you guys uh, this level. OPT, it's a secondary, second day play, but if it takes out the bottom, not a horrible place to be. At least consider uh, adding to a position on a low break. Uh, the stock has a lot to still fall, guys. Uh, I've already taken a bunch out, so for me, it makes sense uh, to be able to treat this as a position uh, that we can add into, not just on a pullback, but on a breakdown of 245, which is a little bit of size in level 2 here we can take advantage of. Brennan. What do you got, bud? Uh, CDNA just uh, saw this one had a huge move in the aftermarket yesterday. 44 up to 50 and a half. This is uh, CareDX, a uh, little biopharma uh, stock. Uh, back to the upside, BTIG and Jefferies and Wainwright, HD Wainwright, all with upgrades and price target increases on this stock. It's been on a bit of a tear, to say the least. Another 16%, guys. I get, I'm not I'm not touching that age to the short again until I see a halt to the upside. It is so strong, 350 now. Uh, maybe that four even area is going to be a place to get back in, but I dip my toes in, and I'm not going to hang on to a loser in that one. It's the only stock that I'm down on today, and if your read is not good, uh, wait uh, for the level that you really, really liked, and when I came in, it was four bucks that I looked at. Uh, it looks like the long is going to win out on this. It seems ridiculously strong today, uh, so I don't want to fight this one. Uh, halts could come if we approach that four even. I would expect... It would make sense to me that you might see an upside halt. It's over 10% from there uh, if we do get it. I do want to quickly circle back. Um, it's probably the only ever... I shouldn't say this, but it's probably one of the only days you'll actually see us trade IBM or at least look at IBM. Uh, that's because uh, with a spinoff, positive for them, uh, generate, some, generate some cash uh, for, the, for the shareholders. But it did sell off. 136 was that price that would make me... Uh, bullish uh, to the upside on it. It's still holding this level uh, uh, lower where I got out at 133. That keeps a couple of things in play, that 136 breakout potential or still that dip buy opportunity off of 130. If it rolls down from here, there also might be a scalp trade uh, into that low, uh, but it'd be like a 132 break into a 130 level, which has some support. I don't love that too much. You're taking like a dollar, dollar fifty on that trade. If you do it perfectly, and then risking a buck. So I don't really love that, but 130 is still going to maintain this level. If we get down there, I'm looking for a dip by an IBM. How would I be? Uh, Jumaya Technologies, JMIA, little e-commerce platform, uh, updating their current quarter sales this morning in the free market, better than expected. So nice little pop here, 7% for JMIA, guys. Okay, guys, uh, new position alert there. That's why we, we blasted that JMIA. That, that, I remember that stock. Wow, that was a, a crazy one. Okay, we're long 22s. No, 29s uh, on DraftKings. My 22 got missed, so we are bidding uh, 22s again. Actually, you know I'm going to change that. Uh, we'll go a little lower. So DraftKings, just we know that that number yesterday, guys, uh, was uh, $52 on the uh, offering. So we're going to go long here. 29s uh, already in the money now, 11 cents. 
I mean, like I, I, like I just keep saying, man, maybe we just get grab that lottery ticket at some point uh, later on tonight uh, because this is what's happening to our account today. We're blowing up right now, guys. Uh, DraftKings, we hit that siren coming from Brandon, and here's 15, 16 cents. Uh, let's just see. Uh, can we get upside again? 52.93, bounce there a little bit. Uh, some bottom spots there. Uh, we can get into 52.70. Uh, we'll get this out, but right now, DraftKings, ooh, it bounces off 50. You know what? We're long at 29. Do we we want to take 20 cents on DraftKings? Eh, uh, let's hold for a little bit more. We'll wait, man. We So right now, normally, we could have took that out, but we're going to wait on 52. It's been such a great day for us. Let's just see if 52 holds, man. Uh, if it does, obviously it did break and snap, but snap right back out. So uh, that was a false break right there, indicated by this reverse doji star. Now to the upside. So uh, yeah, I uh, like this position, and uh, I love my job, if you can't tell uh, gonna come back to Roku and sometimes look the best trade you make isn't necessarily the stock you're gonna be up the most on it might end up being a, uh, that Roku is going to be a fantastic out here. I don't know whether this trail out is going to be good at 225. I had a structure and a plan. I followed my plan. That doesn't mean I'm going to get the top of the move. It doesn't mean I'm going to have the best up. But Roku is starting to come back in. Uh, we mentioned this 220 area where there was just a ton of sideways action in the pre-market. Uh, so if you're looking for some support, that might be it. Uh, I'm done with the long until we bounce off of this 220 or 221 area. Uh, so let's walk away from Roku with the money that we have in our pockets. Uh, it's been a nice break for a couple of days now if the sell is going to be on uh, let's step away optt uh, continues to break down uh, i mentioned this uh, little breakout here at 245 uh, i also talked about adding to my position again i did short this off as, uh, in pre-market 65 uh, 60 to 65 uh, that trade is not necessarily all done with but that break at 245 too much to ignore i uh, just got some out uh, down at 237 if you go to the higher time frame, this is my ultimate target. It's down around this 2 to 220 area. If we can get another 10% out of this, be very, very pleased with this trade in OPTT. Never really threatened us, and sometimes these day two, day three plays are the best ones to have because you have very clear and defined levels where there's been some rejection of price levels. Brennan, what do you got? I uh, just saw this new Tanix, little cloud name. Uh, looks like they launched a new product or a, a, a product platform, I should say. Uh, this morning they were talking about in the pre-market. So 7%. Uh, unfortunately, we're kind of right back at these resistance uh, areas on the daily chart. 23, a uh, big area of resistance. You can see, though, big volume spike as we tag that 23, guys. All right, I'm going to give you some uh, credit here and give you some love here on the chat. Uh, Daryl, I'm going to tweet that out. Thank you so much uh, for that on CCL and on LLY. Uh, we'll tweet that out. Thank you so much uh, for that, Daryl. Um, okay, DraftKings, we can also tweet this position out, but we've started it down here at 30. It's at 50. Oh, hum, there's a big win. Okay, um, yeah, Palantir, we've only got two positions on. And Daryl, yeah, I mean, this is the chat I'm talking about right here. If you had a Twitter handle, let me know, because I just tweeted at you. I can uh, rechange that. But that was easy. Uh, I see what you did to LLY. You're making it look easy. Look, there's no way that I'm going to sit here uh, and say that... Uh, you know, making money in the stock market is an easy thing because there's no way that it is. Uh, but yeah, we'll look at that again, Daryl, uh, to see if that is true. And there's our Twitter accounts right there. Make sure you follow us. Almost 8,000 followers uh, I have. Let's see if we can crack that. Russell Jackson, can't wait for the flat floss action on Monday. Oh, there he is. I see you with your Trader TV hoodie there. And here's the shirt. Here's the shirt, Russell, right here. Uh, nope. Can you get the other camera? Nope. There it is. Flossit TV right there. Trader TV, I see you on the chat there, Daryl. Uh, thank you, so, or, uh, Russell. Thank you so much uh, for that. You, Daryl, and Cameron, uh, another big one. Okay, Brittany, I see you there as well. We'll look at Rocket Mortgage for you. 22 cents now in the money uh, here as DraftKings just continues to blow up. Um, I don't know how we do it either, but uh, we do. And here is Palantir. Look at this trade, guys. We're long down here, 10.09. We're long here, 10.20. This is a name you guys love. This is a name you guys are all trading. Palantir for the win, not just in my account, but also here on Trader TV Live, Neil. It's chicken dinner winners. Give everyone the goods, Neil. Let's go. I see someone talk about that UAMY. If that thing's not at 65, I don't think there's a break just yet on it. Uh, I want to go over to OEG. If you're looking for a bottom pick on a penny stock, um, maybe you wait for this one to get to like 75, 80. You might have a bit of a better return, at least in my opinion. Uh, I'm still on the short side of it, and I, again, I'm going to take this one all the way down to 90 cents uh, before I get all out of it, and then I actually might think about where there might be a rubber band action uh, for a buy trade, but you can see what this has already done. I like day two and day three plays a little better, so UAMY uh, still firmly in the radar, but uh, this one for me is going to be the best one, OEG. I wanted it to go penny stock. It just did. Uh, I'll get all out in front of 90, but right now sitting in like a 30-cent winner on a buck 24 name. 
Uh, we do a little something at 110 or 1010 uh, that we're two minutes late for, and you never, ever want to keep Brendan waiting. Let's go to the big screen. Upgrades and downgrades. few names to uh, get through this morning as far as upgrades and downgrades are concerned. We didn't mention this one, but uh, Costco out this morning in the pre-market uh, upgrading their current quarter same store sales so uh, and monthly as well. Uh, an upgrade on Costco hasn't really done much, though. So, uh, Roku, uh, Spirit, we talked about uh, Tesla as well uh, to the upside so far. Citigroup uh, downgraded today. Uh, also Valet and Integra making the biggest move to the downside. Uh, one in the insurance group. Let's uh, move over here and have a look at Costco real quick. Uh, yeah, it hasn't really done much. They get a little bit of a flush off the open uh, down to 362, but we're kind of right back in this range from yesterday. But uh, same store sales were decent, kind of in line with expectations. Nothing uh, terribly exciting, though, for this quarter. Uh, GKOS was uh, one of the downgraded ones. That is the wrong direction. Let's go back this way and have a look at GKOS. Down a little bit. Volume, the story here, though, nothing really to uh, write home about on the downgraded side. Back over to Neil. Thank you, Brennan. Peloton, uh, another one of these names here, guys. It's just one of those crazy runners, and we talked about this with Roku. Uh, we mentioned this with Beyond Meat. Uh, at some point, maybe selling does come in. Uh, it feels like today, well, not feels like today. You can already see here on the chart. It looks like today uh, might be that day 120. Uh, hard resistance off the open. I wasn't looking at this one. Beyond Meat uh, was on the radar. Roku's been on the radar. IBM's been on the radar. But let's look to see if uh, this little bounce play uh, that's, that's happened at 116. You go back to yesterday's high, 118.50. Um, look what stands out here. Bottom pre-market, breakout, retracement, fail at that price. If Peloton's going to go again, uh, you do have a breakout opportunity through this 118.50. That will take you towards the high of the day. If it's going to roll over, you have a short off of that level as well. So it almost doesn't matter what direction you want to play. Uh, I, that would be my stop either way. The first thing I'm going to do, because it has been doing this uh, on the daily chart, uh, is going to look to see if it is going to be a sell day. I'll use that 118.50 for a short. Roll into a long in the case that it does break. Brennan. Uh, what do you got for us, buddy? Uh, we talked about Afria first off, but just got a volume alert here for uh, this one. CGC starting to go as well. So cannabis in play definitely took out the high there. Big volume spike for CGC. That one now 5% as well, guys. I'm going to take this position over here uh, once we get above this 117.50 uh, in a Peloton. Remember, this is a reverse to the long side. Uh, I just think that it will pivot uh, into a break up uh, about a dollar from here. Uh, that AGE is approaching $4. And I said I would stay away from this stock because my read was bad on the long, couldn't hang on to it. Now it is headed exactly towards when I first took this long. I said, okay, 315 gives you $4. I'm not good at doing these long parabolic moves because in my head, this stock has no business being where it is. Uh, so I'm usually looking for places to sell it because that makes way more sense to me. Uh, $4 is the next level to the upside if you go to the daily chart. At some point, it might turn. If it gets past this, uh, you can see there was much better resistance uh, at $5 uh, if you want to go far enough back. Now we're literally talking about the beginning of the year last year, uh, the last time this stock even saw these numbers. $4 first. $5, I mean, it's crazy if it gets there. Even crazy if it gets there without a halt. It's a little bit crazy to me, guys. Uh, Ooh, my chart just uh, blew up one more time, but Workhorse on the move once again. We talked about that one. It was dying. Looks like it's trying to bounce back. Oh, uh, yeah, I just uh, refilled the coffee there. The first one that Valeria got me was a little bit off, so uh, we just grab another one there, and uh, let's see what happens with that. So, Oh, also, what up to Jarhead there? Hydration Nation has to start. I didn't see you in the chat yet, Jarhead, but uh, here we are. We'll hit the water up very, very soon uh, for you. Okay, Palantir, uh, again, we, we're holding that last 10%. Uh, you could see all of these outs, man. Uh, we, this was kind of bad. We were scared that it was going to break VWAP again, although yesterday I was telling you that VWAP wasn't really that important. Uh, for Palantir. So uh, we'll wait to that. It goes up to 1040. And the funny thing is I should have dropped that because yesterday at 1040, look, look at all of this resistance up here, 1040. I do have the hammer again. And like I said, we will drop that down. Uh, if it does, there, so uh, DraftKings just breaks down 352. So uh, we did not get a win on that one. Uh, but here we go. 40 was resistance to the high side there on Palantir yesterday. So now let's see what happens. Uh, should have got out some more. Bad mistake there. So we'll dump again. Again, we have enough to get out again uh, a little bit. We're not going to hold this all the way back to VWAP. I think we'll dump another piece right now. And then if we get out, you know, what am I? Guys, uh, breaking through yesterday, already broke through today's high. Breaking through yesterday's high yeah. is workhorse now. So, I mean, 
Uh, I came in here and literally right before the opener, I think right at the open, we talked about the flush that Workhorse had put on. Well, forget about that. It's now 10% to the upside from the bottom. It's now up 1.7% on the day. I was just looking at it saying, okay, well, if it can hold uh, 2450, uh, this has gone a little bit too far too fast. Unless I see something coming across the wire, which I haven't yet, uh, it just feels like uh, Workhorse caught a bid and can't stop itself. Uh, if it's going to be back below 2450 at some point, I think this is going to go. In the event that there is no news here, it's going to be hard not to fade off of it. But uh, I fought one I fought one stock, which is super strong, and it's the only loss I have today. It's going to be hard for me uh, to stand in the face of this one as it looks like it's going crazy here. Workhorse. Brennan, uh, you got anything here? Uh, another one that's been uh, super strong lately, Plug Power. Uh, we talked about it yesterday a few times. Big move up yesterday. It ended the day all the way up here at 1890. Uh, a little gap higher, but uh, look at that. They faded this big time this morning. 1760, we're coming back to that kind of 18 and a half area. Decent spot here for plug, guys. Uh, I just talked about some selling coming into at least one of these names, and that's going to be Peloton. We'll line that one up and knock it out. Now, if you like it to the long side, I'd look for that 118.50 break. Uh, if it can hold the bottom again, maybe you want to be doing some bottom picking. I'm just going to see if it can't break through this 17, get us down towards uh, previous close. Uh, again, if you get a trend like this uh, to the upside, you got to start thinking about where people are going to take profits. And uh, smart places to take profits or solid places to go short, in my opinion, as, an intra as a day trader. Uh, so I like this 118.50. I, I think enough people will probably have sold uh, once we get a break back up through that price. You get a momentum long into the high of the day, uh, much like Roku. Uh, much like Beyond Meat, uh, this one probably a little bit easier of a short, but uh, wasn't on the radar. It is now, and we're one for one. I'll tell you that AGE is starting to come back in. It's top 393. So my read is absolute. Every single level has been dead on on AGE, and it's the only stock I'm down on, which is pretty incredible. Uh, that one is 170 million shares, going a little crazy. I'll hang on to Peloton. I'll, I'll go uh, with a 118 stop on the second half of this position as it's now gone in the money for me uh, with a target here, but a dollar in the money if I can get like 116.50 or 116.30. Somewhere in that 20-penny range would be the next target. Yeah, we love uh, Peloton. Good, good shorts there for Peloton. Uh, Peloton, uh, again, another one of those names that uh, we mentioned, uh, I mentioned buying uh, down in the 80s. Uh, I did not get it, but uh, Peloton, strong name, going to continue to go, man, as long as the um, virus is here and people are still working out at home. Uh, why not grab, you know, what, like the best equipment, technology and everything uh, there with Peloton? So, yeah, good little look there. Uh, Brendan, you did mention Plug Power. Yeah, you want to talk about a strong stock, Wowzers! Plug Power has been super strong, so uh, we are looking to see maybe 1850. See if we can't take that out. We'll look at it a little bit of a longer uh, time frame on another chart, but here, let's go three minutes to see what 1850 looks like. I do like that uh, name, Plug Power. It's been a big runner. Uh, you can see here on the three minute, big drop down. Again, not really sure. I, I, I might have missed what Brendan was mentioning there uh, for why that did happen, but again, it's just probably a little overheated. You do see the NASDAQ coming down a little bit. We may have to go look at some Tesla, but 1850 is right here. Looks like a good spot. If we can get this above 1850, we'll put on some more risk for plug and then just use, like even the three minute VWAP is down here at 25. So a little 25 cent gap is pretty good for us. So we can play that, but we need to get above 1850 uh, on that one. Just an update on Palantir. Uh, we did tell you about that we would get some out there and I did that exactly uh, at 30. And then now we'll wait to see if I can't get the rest out, man, like 35, 36, 37, something like that. Uh, and here it comes right now. And then we'll go longer uh, through 50. I'm not gonna take the break through 40. That seems sketchy. We'll make sure it's confirmed and go through 50. But here it is, man. It's another chicken dinner winner for Palantir. Uh, and for us here today, it's been a big day and even gonna get bigger with Brendan's update. What the hell's that? Brendan, small cap, recap, red boot. Hey guys, yeah, let's uh, talk on uh, a few more of these uh, little small caps. Uh, I want to talk with the, uh, this one. First off, Ion Geophysical. I don't know, one of those mining stocks, IO in New York. Huge move up at the end of the day yesterday. They came out with some uh, results that were better than expected. Uh, big gap back down uh, in the pre-market this morning. Uh, there was a little bit of a shelf here at 220 that came into uh, play late in the day yesterday. And then above that, 250 uh, was the level to uh, have a look at. This has been very disappointing. Uh, not a huge move, but uh, stress-free. Nevertheless, volume already dying off on IO. 
in New York. But I uh, did give you an opportunity. Had to be a little bit patient with uh, that one. We'll shift over to DPW. Uh, yeah, 310 up to 320, a little bit of an area here, uh, both support and resistance. So decent opportunity to be short into 270, starting to roll over again. Uh, on the other side of things, this one not, still doing decent volume. So DPW worth a look still, uh, making a bit of a uh, lower high, as you will, uh, trying to get down to day lows. And OEG, yeah, this was a really easy one this morning, uh, 135. Uh, to 145, bit of a consolidation area. So uh, I actually had offers higher than that as well. I was willing to go all the way up to 150, uh, down to 90 cents. So we got through that dollar mark that uh, Neil was mentioning uh, on a huge volume spike as well. So back below a dollar for OEG. Guys, back over to you. All right, time to do like the little cross here on uh, DraftKings. Sometimes you step in front of the train, uh, but you know, I, I just have to when I see this setup. $52, uh, I mean, offering. Uh, look, you got you to gotta look at that. There's been gravity towards that price every time it gets there. It, it seems like it has to test it. Uh, and then you, you look at that bottom before at 51.65. Uh, so I'm long in front of it on this little, I mean, I, I almost said little dip. I did accidentally say little dip, uh, but it's not. It's another $3 move, but look at the range. Very, very tight uh, last day. This is a 15-minute chart, but since, uh, since the announcement came through, it's in the same range. If it bounces off here, that gives you a potential uh, return of a couple of bucks. So if it can hold the bottom, you're literally only risking. I'm going to start to position at 90, but I want to have a price of like 75, 80 in the event that it breaks. So you're risking like 25 pennies to what? Make a dollar, dollar fifty uh, on a name which has managed to hold this price, which also happens to be the uh, uh, that offering price. I'll take my shot and uh, and run away from it. Uh, I am also going to say uh, not no moss too, but I'm, uh, if a stock is as strong as as uh, Peloton's going to be, uh, when you, when I play pullbacks, I'm not saying I know exactly where it's going to go down to. I like to play within the range if I can. Uh, so Peloton, uh, where are you guys? Peloton, I'm going to get out, and I just did in front of that 116. I talked about that low of day. Obvious psychological level. Uh, again, it's the 118.50 that I like for a break to the long side. When it consolidated lower than that, I'm just going to take that little structured trade here, short off of 117.60. Take your butt, take your 50 cent scalp. Uh, when it breaks that next little lump down, uh, that's when I'll get out in front of that low. Uh, Peloton, if you're looking for a dip buy, uh, this is what I would probably consider here. One of the other reasons I'm going to get out. This little afternoon bounce point at 115.50, maybe that's where it holds up. Uh, until you see some sideways action, I'm not sure that you know that. I like to get in on the way back up if I can, if I'm going to fight the day trend. Uh, so let's see if it actually holds a level first. It hasn't done so uh, too well, un unless you really want to count that initial first like 5-10 minutes of action. So Peloton, we got a winner here. I don't want to rush into another trade uh, just because it's been a good stock. 118.50 still remains a breakout price and obvious resistance. All right, guys, uh, we're into plug. So we take some plug here at 44. Uh, so that was good. So we got some 44s and now we got some 50s. So it does break above 50. We hit the siren for a new trade alert. Uh, it does go above 50 there. We we get in, but our first, this is a three minute chart. Let me bring it down to a one minute so you can see. Uh, we did take the long first at 44, uh, got some there. We should have got some out at 49 uh, because we knew we were going to uh, engage in a 50 long. So, but that's okay. Now we've got plug power. I mean, look, VWAP's back here, 28, 29. Uh, so we can try to hold it if we can until then. That would be absolutely fantastic. But uh, right now, plug to the north side. Hopefully, we can keep going uh, and break through a little bit there. There we go. We take off a little bit from our 44s. So that's a win uh, and now we'll see if plug can get back into this area man 1870 1890 something like that uh, but yeah I think it's well worth it this is going to be back down about 20 cents to 1825 uh, on a losing spot here but it's having a hard time right now with 50 so we may have to leave this one not sure I was sort of really hoping here that once we broke through this level uh, it got some spice to it so right now it's trying it's trying uh, we're not going to give up on this one yet but I do have some orders upside here here 60 or so so uh, if it goes then that would be absolutely fantastic yeah and here comes that draft king so step in front of it is a moving train to the downside at least anyways uh this uh 51 65 from yesterday is being tested right now uh it did just bounce at least a little bit so i did uh, manage to add to my position down there uh, at 68 believe it or not so pretty good entry price there but right around that new fresh low here if it breaks uh that 60 i gotta get out of this one uh, as it is sliding heavily uh, to the downside i'll have to take some off in front of 53 because that's already a dollar win uh, if you get it, uh, next leg up would be, if it does what it did yesterday, that's like 54, 54 half. Brennan, what do you uh, have? A few teeny tiny banks keep popping up here on uh, Volume Scanner this morning, guys. BYFC, one of those, 10%. Look at the volume still coming into this thing near day highs there. I'll flip over to uh, CARV, Carve Bancorp, another little teeny tiny bank. Broke $9 up there 
on a huge volume spike. So some of the uh, smaller banks getting a sentence today, guys. All right, I see you plug power right now. Yeah, there's the bread and plus. You wanted that, Russell Jackson. You got it. You also want some money? Then just follow us uh, right here. Look at plug. Bang! Just like we talked about right there. It's raining down money here again, Neil. Plug power through. We get some out at 55 there. We'll see if we can get to 56, 57. We did say some of our targets would be up here, 60 and 70. Uh, that's right where we sort of fell down, so we'll wait to see on that one. 1890 to the long side, but here goes plug again. So we have 44s, then we have 50s, and now you're upside to 56 right here. So let's see if plug power can get us again uh, to a high spot. DraftKings, lose on that one for me uh, so yeah we are only loss there today is DraftKings. so we'll see what we can do here now with plug power it's not going to be a loser we're long at 51 uh, but it's not really running for us uh, the way we thought so let's get some more out here high 50s hopefully and then try to hold at least half for like 75 or 80. The, the fact that plug, uh, you know, sort of broke through pre-market here, that 19 area. We talked about 18 yesterday, uh, round number 19, if, if it gets it. Uh, I think we'll see, I think we have a good shot to see that 20 if we get a carry through through the high. Uh, you saw how decent oh. that trade was at, at 18 even. The mistake that I made yesterday uh, was not doing the scalp trade where as an active trader, I should just be all involved holding a core position at 18 or in front of 18 and then taking the 10, 15 cents, waiting for the bigger flush back in to what was VWAP and like a 50 cent win. If I see that same thing again at 20, uh, right around lunchtime, going to be all over that play. That's probably the only way I'm going to short plug power uh, is if I see a level uh, with some size of that even dollar and some people taking profits because... Uh, that chews through uh, price levels like absolute butter, guys. And look at the hold here. I mean, the fact that it's going to hold that strongly on a dip down at the open. This is a 15-minute chart, but it's going to hold that 1750 that well. That's a strong sign for plug. Bouncing up is DraftKings, and yes, it's approaching 52, but only 20 pennies in the money, guys. I'm looking to see if it can't break back up. 50 cents to a dollar for the first leg is what I want to take. I want as much as two bucks if we can get all the way to that previous day or yesterday's oh, high. Brennan, what do you got? Uh, Consumer Portfolio Services Incorporated. Another little teeny tiny one worth mentioning here. Still up significantly. Uh, 32%. This was actually blocked on our platform early on. We've had it since unblocked. So we can now trade CPSS. Uh, still 32%, but uh, this thing's faded off from 520 already. So come back a long way. Still doing decent volume, though. Worth a look, guys. Too late. Um, yeah, this was uh, on the radar, of course. Um, uh, one of those things where you want to make sure the volume's going to continue. It's starting to slide off here. Uh, because the only reason why I'm actually going to continue to monitor this stock is because if there's someone potentially buying them, there's a chance at a deal and it's going to be over $6 in cash. Uh, there's at some point it's going to make sense uh, to be buying this name. And it's getting very close to that previous high of 430. It's going to be hard not to start dipping into this one uh, for a dip buy. Uh, someone values the company is willing to put their money where their mouth is at $6.18. Even if the vote is no, uh, that's a bit of a bullish sign for the stock. And uh, I'll have to take my shot here on, on the dip on CPSS. Uh, it gets anywhere close to that 434 quarter mark. Uh, this is a place to go long. Normally on these retracement plays, I'm not automatically going long. But if there's bio speculation, that's an entirely different ballgame, people. Okay, guys, and uh, you like this, uh, Russell, and, money, and so on and so forth, money, but the money, money is uh, money, just coming money, in again. Money, money. And look, this is the thing, man. We tell you when we like the trades, I take them, we take out the stick, and look at Plug Power, man. Out, 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 all the way up. And I did want to show something here uh, on Twitter. Uh, you guys, uh, you mentioned it, Daryl, in the chat there about cannabis, and I said this aged well. Look at the date, man. October 5th, uh, we talked about that, and we talked about all of these names and possibly good Good little buy here. Let's see if it's a little payday if you get that one. So that's back in on that. So Twitter, good little look there. We've been on the cannabis names. Congratulations to everybody who's been on that as well, Mr. Wicked. Uh, two days in a row, guys, for uh, C-O-T-Y. They uh, came out this morning and said they were expanding their Kylie Jenner product line and uh, online platform. So 9.5%, two days. We're back into this range on the daily charts. Uh, 360 was a decent area. Uh, for C-O-T-Y, doing volume again today. Uh, Valeria is watching what is going on over in Europe. About an hour left in the session over there, V. Yes, Brandon, Rolls-Royce is up almost 19% as it won a federal contract award worth $490,000. Decent contract for Rolls-Royce. Uh, yeah, automakers, we were talking about Ford uh, early on as well. Automakers a uh, little bit in play today, guys.
Ford, Ford, Ford. Hopefully yeah, in play to the upside is going to be DraftKings, uh, but it's still in the bottom end of this channel, guys. I do a little like little prayer thing. It's one of those, uh, if this level can hold, it should be a fantastic one. That's why my targets, and I only want the first third out if it gets to VWAP, and then I'm looking to be aggressively take it out on the north side of that. And that's mostly because of the buying that I saw coming to this, uh, this one yesterday. Uh, you can see it did play within this range. So sometimes a range-bound stock, you can take advantage of uh, of that range if it wants to be holding. And so far, it, it looks like maybe there's a bit of a bottom pick in, in DraftKings. A Donkey Kong, is a, as I know Sean loves to refer to it. Uh, old trader habits are to give nicknames to symbols. So when you're shouting it across the floor, I don't actually have to say a name that I've never heard of before. In this case, you guys all know DraftKings. Uh, yeah, DraftKings, Donkey Kong. Uh, okay, I'm just making sure I don't have some of my uh, orders here stuck up. Uh, oh, that Roku, yeah, that would have been a good one if that would have hit. Uh, but okay, uh, plug power, again, fading back in a little bit. Our out's going to be right where we're in. So uh, we'll see about 1845 or so, uh, get some of that out, and we'll wait on that name. Uh, Palantir still going up. We are out of Palantir. Uh, as you guys can see, our best out 38s. We did exactly what we said. Bang, bang, bang uh, to the upside. Thank you so much uh, for all the love on the chat guys much appreciated what's up brandon uh just seeing this uh oxbridge reholding so a reinsurance company oxbr big move here just in the last few minutes 60 percent uh we're back to uh daily chart highs here on uh, oxbr watch three dollars but i'm uh, gonna check on headlines first glance didn't see much but big time volume guys I don't know if I can go long in a, in, in a reinsurer. My wife works in reinsurance, and it's not that company, so how can I like it? No, I'm just I'm sort of kidding there. Uh, but look, uh, a lot of parabolic movers, and I'll, I'm going to quickly go back to age, if only because it's doing 200 million shares. Uh, nothing to do with my potential read on it, but uh, uh, $4, you did get that turnaround. It's just now breaking down below that 315 uh, area that we were talking about earlier. Uh, I said I would stay away from this thing until it got to like below 275. Uh, consolidated maybe would make more sense to me because... Uh, if I'm going to be taking a long breakout, uh, thinking it goes to four, and then I get long at 320 and end up losing twice, probably not going to be my best stock of the day. That's why I haven't dipped back into it. Uh, so far, it's my only loser. But DraftKings, you never really know. It's getting like 30 or 40 cents of the money and then just running into resistance. So uh, there might be a little bit of a trouble getting off this bottom on DraftKings. It did it yesterday, and the market is going up. So a couple of things working in my favor. Uh, let's see if age goes back below this 275 mark if it does. Things might make a little bit more sense on this high flyer. Brendan, what do you got? I just watched uh, cruise lines here, guys. CCL negative. Yeah, big uh, move down for CCL today. I uh, just saw a note suggesting that their uh, CEO says there's every reason to be optimistic that they will be sailing in the U.S. by the end of the year. So just watching the cruise lines, guys. All right, you guys People know CCL. Uh, Daryl, shout out to you as well. Uh, you know that I've been on CCL and hammering that one pretty good. Probably my best stock of the year is Carnival. So uh, we'll have to go back on this one and just see what's happening. Uh, yeah, not much right now. Uh, this is a one-minute chart, not giving me many ideas. 1570, obviously 1550, a good little spot there to get long. Let's see if we can't break this down just a little bit more even uh, to a three-minute chart and give that some love. Uh, back to the back side here. Let's just cancel those orders, just to make sure. Uh, okay, yeah, 15. 80 is where we're at. That looked the same on the one-minute chart, so we get some love back there. Let's put some orders in the 50s and 60s, see if we get it. I'm not going to go long on that news right now. It's surprising. I thought that that would have spiked the stock a little bit more than this. Uh, they're going to be U.S. operations by the end of the year. I just... I don't think that's going to be happening. they got to get approval from the government, and uh, they're nowhere near there. You can't even fly uh, right now internationally. So if they're just going to cruise around, um, I don't know, the Caribbean or something, maybe that'll be fine. Uh, but I'm just wondering about what CCL's plans are here long term. I actually look for a breakdown through 1550. Yeah, I, was, I, I heard rumors of some interesting plans, and nothing confirmed again. This is just some of my family members talking in the Caribbean about uh, some interesting ideas of where they, they could convert or change the experience with the cruise line so that you're not, uh, you're not necessarily uh, docking from place to place, but maybe you're just uh, uh, you know, circling around and staying in one dock uh, and then hanging around in that island for one, uh, uh, as a, a single destination and getting the same experience without as much exposure. I don't know how any of that's going to play out at some point. The reality is there's a demand for this, and there's a lot of people who are just, they live, they live for these cruises, and uh, you have to understand at some point uh, that's going to mean uh, the money's going to come back into them. We just don't know when that's going to be. Uh, at some point, the money might come back into DraftKings. Um, it doesn't seem like it's happening here. 
The, go the good sign is if we can hold here, maybe at a higher low, like at a 85 or maybe even this 90 range, or better yet, even 52, uh, if it does do that, I'll probably look to add to this position because, you know, it's still a tight stop to that low of day. Right now, looking to only risk, you know, about 20 cents to that bottom. And I have a better price than I anticipated at 77. I was willing to have an 85 price, which means I have some room to add for my risk uh, parameters here. But it is still selling it in a downward trend, so you don't want to fight it too hard. I'd like to see it coming back up and holding a higher level. 52 could do that right now, and I get into some more shares if I can. I'm going to jump back over to uh, one other thing that we've been short basically all morning long. I and mean, not basically all morning, but since we came on air uh, in DPW, it was a pre-market rollover. It looks like it might have caught a bottom here, or at least attempt to ca catch a bottom at 275. I'm going to cover this one. It was going to be at 315. Uh, now we're going to move this stop down around to three just to make sure uh, that we don't turn a winning trade into a losing trade. If it breaks through there, it might have a second push in it. And I don't want to, again, turn any kind of a winner into throwing profits away. It can't be a loser now because I've taken it most out. Uh, but that doesn't mean you want to get sloppy. Moving the stop to three even on DPW. All right, guys, and uh, we're going uh, also pretty good here. Bitcoin making a move. You can see to the north side, we're long, 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 out, 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 long again and getting out right now on GBTC. So uh, unless you can trade the Bitcoin futures, this is going to be a hard one uh, for us. But uh, right now, GBTC making moves uh, to the upside. So we'll see about that. Maybe Square now moving uh, as well. Let's give a quick look at that. Uh, no, Square going the other way, 182.11. So their little 50 million buy there doesn't seem to matter too much. I said I was surprised. Like 50 million doesn't seem like that much market cap in the billions. But uh Okay, Brendan, over there with uh, Sector Watch. The board looks nice to me, nice and green. Blue. I guess there's blue in green, so we'll, yeah, we'll use that. Uh, it is positive, definitely positive right across the board. 0.7% here to the upside uh, for the overall market. Uh, dominoes sticking out here. <laughs> Uh, kind of a lonely little red square today, 7.5% to the downside, uh, even with a decent report, but it was the costs uh, that were a little bit concerning for Domino's uh, to the downside today. Uh, Carnival right there beside it just talked about uh, that little headline that came across 1.5% to the downside for Carnival. Look at the hotels, though. MGM and Hilton both up one full percent. So consumer discretionaries are nicely higher. Tapestry, PHM, NVR, and uh, Lennar there, uh, LEN. Uh, 3.6% to the upside. Energy stocks also. Uh, we saw a 2.5% move in crude oil. The entire group, energy stocks, positive real estate stocks, also in positive territory. Look at the banks, though. Again today, it's the banking group. The entire thing uh, nicely higher. There's JP Morgan, 2% to the upside. Uh, BEN, IVZ, and SYF, all 2.5 plus percent to the upside. Uh, down here, we saw uh, IBM, 8% now to the upside. DXC, and PayX had earnings early in the week. Uh, a little bit of a late reaction to that. Earnings were good for PayX. Uh, LDOS and IT also 2% to the upside. So uh, the market being led by financials and tech stocks so far today. A uh, little bit of weakness here in the consumer discretionary uh, group. But otherwise, yeah, decent board. Healthcare stocks a little back and forth today. Amgen struggling today, down 4%. BAX down about 3%. Uh, with material stocks mostly higher, CTVA, also an earnings name, 5.6%. Overall, though, 0.7% uh, for the S&P. Back over to Sean. I mean, JP Morgan makes me super happy because, again, you know, trying to give people, uh, educate people on a little bit of uh, day trading. Obviously, we're doing that uh, here. And then uh, I, JP Morgan, uh, I tweeted it out. I, I can't find it. It was too long ago. But when we were getting long 95, 94, 95 and explaining to you guys why uh, that was, and I'll show you again here, uh, JP Morgan dips into these areas. This is just two weeks ago, man, I, I tweeted out, let's get long JP Morgan in our own accounts there, and it was 94, so uh, up to 101. So a nice little return there on the bank, plus the dividend, put that in your pipe and smoke it. So we'll get some slaying, some long-term positions as well. Uh, okay, uh, after that, man, there's not a whole hell of a lot. Uh, plug, we, we take the profit there. It comes back down. Uh, we should have reloaded, but uh, we get out, like I said, for that flat there at the very end. So uh, plug could have always, this is a three-minute chart, let me change that. Uh, plug could have always been better, but uh, it didn't go. But I'm really happy that we got at least some 64s there. Uh, so make sure that you guys smash the like uh, and subscribe if you haven't done that already. Let's just keep doing that, man. We need to make uh, all that money back. Uh, the, the show is for free. So if you can, uh, hit that like. Make sure that your friends can see what we're doing and share. Look at this, Daryl. Uh, CCL goes all the way to 1580, man, uh, and drops off that uh, little VWAP spot there. I was looking for a 1550 break. Brennan brought this news, and I was just surprised 
that it didn't go right away off that news, but I guess maybe Brendan had it early, so should have listened to that. We could have got long, man, 50s, 60s, uh, maybe not 50s, but we could have got long definitely here, 61, 2, 3, uh, and it goes all the way to 76. So uh, my scalping style would have definitely taken out some profits right there, but NASDAQ making moves higher. Let's watch Carnival. I'm still waiting for this 1550, guys. Yeah, uh, someone in the chat, I, I apologize because I didn't catch the name, uh, briefly mentioned UAMY. We did a pretty well uh, trading this stock before this penny stock. Uh, I'm looking at it now, and I kept sort of offhand uh, threw out there. Uh, someone watching it, I didn't pull the chart up, and I said, I'm not looking at that one for a long trade uh, to a dollar uh, unless it breaks that 65 cent mark. And this is what I was talking about. Uh, this is where I made my bones shorting it uh, yesterday's action was off of this 65 level. I caught the rollover. It was a great trade back into 50. So uh, unless that breaks, uh, I'm still going to be a southbound trader on this name. I think maybe it does want to squeeze to a dollar. It wouldn't be crazy. And not the first time uh, that I've seen that kind of a play. Uh, there is going to be some resistance up here at 80 cents, of course. But uh, 65 break. I'm going to short in front of it. I just went to get the locates. Man, it's good to be a day trade of the world. Uh, we're paying 0.3 cents per share to short UAMY. That's literally the cheapest I've ever seen uh, where we've had to pay. It might as well be free. Uh, so I'll watch that one through 65. But if it rolls over here, I'm taking the short, guys. As far as age goes, AGE... Not much to see here. I, I did anticipate that uh, at some point it's going to go again. No way this stock holds uh, a 20 or 30 cent range for very long. Uh, the longer the sideways action, the more violent the breakout would be. Uh, so watch out for like a 350 break to the upside. Where I got out of my short like an idiot. And then, uh, oh, this $3 move right here. If it goes below there, I like 275 much better. So I'm going to wait patiently for that. DraftKings, I did take some more. As I mentioned, uh, I wanted to have a price in the low to mid 80s. That's what I have now. Uh, finally on DraftKings, but it's still hanging around that bottom. Uh, the reason we like this trade, just going into this 15-minute uh, this chart from yesterday, nice hard bottom off 51.65, and then a nice recovery. This is essentially the same move. I don't think it's smart to anticipate that uh, with this obvious of a pattern, it will go all the way back, uh, but let's see if it can't sustain this bounce. Brendan has something for us. Let's go to him. Yeah, Sean was just uh, mentioning, guys, the uh, Bitcoin was making a move to the upside. Uh, right on cue, some of the crypto stocks also following suit. Riot here, 9% on the day. Decent volume for Riot. We'll flip over to Mara. Another one, 14% to the upside. Trying to break that uh, top end of the consolidation on the daily chart for those two guys. Yeah, uh, Bitcoin uh, for sure going nuts. Uh, we'll find, I mean, if you could find out why, it probably has something to do with uh, obviously that Square news, right? So uh, Square taking a step up there uh, in Bitcoin. So we'll see there. Nice little talk about it. We'll check out Riot Blockchain uh, in a minute. Here comes CCL backside. Still waiting for that 1550 to go. Uh, we will wait on that one. Look at NEO, guys. N I to the O right here. Uh, big mover in the day. Obviously, we missed it from the open. Let me just zoom back. You can see uh, here's the open. It, it always. I don't want to say always. I'll have to go back and do a little bit of work, but it seems like it flushes and then tries to pick a base somewhere. Today's base kind of starts low, though, like 2180, 2190, uh, almost back to where we, op we were last year, yesterday at the close, 2150. But once you break, man, uh, on this stock, look what happens once it breaks this view up. It tries there, fails, then it goes again, 2196, all the way to 2240. Now we're bouncing around again. What is this level, 22? Oh, we're right, right here, man. Do I want to do this? Uh, 2216, uh, let's go long on NIO. We're going to try it right now, guys. 2216, we'll see if we can't run this thing uh, back in the 30s. 2216, NIO. Uh, speaking of long tail, we'll get to Don uh, DraftKings in a second, but uh, right here on Peloton, looking like it might break, and it just did, so it just got triggered in, but this 116.50, uh, it made a bottom off 116. That's where I got out, thought maybe there could be a turn on Peloton. Uh, you know, it closed at 117, so that's where a break even, or at least flat on the day, is going to be for the stock. Uh, I'm going to take this little break, give it to the previous low, not the actual you know low of the day, but I like that 116 uh, where I thought to be uh, the first little dip down and may might hold. So we'll risk, you know, in and around about 50 cents, uh, depending on what slippage might be. But you got about a dollar to at least VWAP where I was shorting it before uh, that 117.60. So let's see if Peloton can get some juice back to the upside. Much like we need DraftKings to get some juice back up. And it's like 30 cents in the money now. Uh, I will take some off. And I didn't, I wasn't doing this before because I thought there'd be a bigger move. But like common sense sort of dictates, why would I expect exactly the same pattern to hold up precisely the same way it did yesterday? So now I will take some off in front of VWAP. Uh, 
it's not as nearly as strong of a bounce. It's held, it's held the low, but if I don't take a quarter off for like a 50 cent winner on DraftKings, it doesn't really make a lot of sense here, guys. So I'll still take some off there. I'll still take a little bit off around VWAP, and I'm looking for this target uh, right around this consolidation on the way down, which is like 53.40 to 53.60. Uh, Brendan has a little something for us. Let's uh, go over to the to the, to the big screen. Not the big screen, to the desk. Yeah, we were talking about uh, Bitcoin there a little bit. Uh, yeah, there was the Square story. Uh, so Square taking a little bit of a bigger investment into Bitcoin. Uh, there was also a huge uh, monster options volume on the CME yesterday uh, for Bitcoin. So this is just, uh, you know, the last kind of week and a half or going back to July, I guess it was. Uh, but huge uh, volume spike yesterday and options volume uh, was like 300 percent apparently higher than Tuesday. So Wednesday versus Tuesday, there was a 300 percent increase uh, in that volume, guys. I mean, it never feels good to uh, hold the bag on these names, but uh, I've made way more trading than I have lost investing long, 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 and uh, we just cashed the money in. Look, I trade everything money, on money, this show money, besides money, futures, money, uh, money, and you can money, see this, man. Money. Big names, small names, Neo we lose on, Plug Power, Luck and Coffee, Eli Lilly, Nicola today, DraftKings, uh, Palantir as well. Uh, here we go. So uh, Neo to the downside right here. We did go long. We did get some out, uh, 18s and 19s, then a little bit more as it fails back to the downside. You're now testing VWAP. We're going to give this one back to 22 even, guys, uh, on this. So this could be a big loser. Uh, not big loser, but we did put some risk on you. You know that. We did talk about it. So uh, now we're out of half. Half and we'll wait uh, for the rest. Uh, it didn't go. And as Neil, I mean, look at these moves. When Neil breaks levels, it goes, right? So, like here, VWAP go, VWAP go, VWAP no go, come back down, right? So, we're trying to, we don't want to have a full load on if this happens. So, uh, that's why we do get some out. So, breaks, doesn't go, get out. And now we a little bit responsible. That's what we do, man. We got to be a little responsible here uh, and take some of this profit off uh, the table and not lose everything. So, here it comes. Look at this, crashing back down. So, we're going to get out at 22. There it is. We're we're out of Neo right now. So that one is not a banger. That's an unplug here on the electric car. First real loser of the day, guys. Not in, not even in the same specter, but uh, uh, same sphere. But Peloton also looking uh, incredibly weak. This stop triggers almost instantly. Like I literally talk about where my stop is. Uh, and then a minute later, it retests that bottom. I didn't want to give it to the low. It's too much of a downward trend uh, to be playing that game for you. A bit of a pullback in DraftKings as well, but it's still holding about 52. That's a good sign. Uh, I wanted it to hold a, a higher low here on DraftKings. It feels like it's at least making a strong attempt to, so there is some buying coming in. And, of course, we've already mentioned this uh, time and time again, the gravity uh, towards that uh, issue price. Uh, you can see it sometimes, and uh, it looks like there is some consolidation, which is working in my favor. All my entries have been sort of uh, below the top end of this range. Uh, thankfully, I was pretty lucky to get this bottom wick, guys. That was actually almost pure luck. Uh, that's what we have in 85. If it continues this move, uh, I think there's going to be a potential breakout. And like I said, I wouldn't consider uh, anything short side on DraftKings unless I'm looking at 54, 54 half uh, in the face. Long ways to get there, though, uh, in the money and hopefully starting to make its move. Uh, but patient game here in DraftKings. But let's go to Brennan. Don't want to keep him waiting. Uh, I just saw this uh, volume spike uh, to the downside this time on uh, AGE. Uh, Neil, you were mentioning that four level up there. That was a good one. Uh, yeah, if you go to a daily chart on uh, this AGE, there's, there's a little shelf here, four, and then below that kind of 370 was uh, the, the last kind of line in the sand, uh, which was that level there. But uh, just breaking downside or trying to break this three on that uh, AGE on a volume spike, guys. Hang on a second. I might actually get filled in drafting a couple of pennies away there. And uh, yeah, why is there someone like piggybacking on my order? I'm going to get aggressive. It's it's at 52.35. I'll just quickly show you here, guys. And it's just a bit of a seller stepped up. And I was sort of, uh, I had an order here and uh, I'll let someone else throw 5,000 shares. That's what they want to do. If it breaks through this 35, I'll probably just aggressively get out on the back end or maybe use the quarters as a bit of an area. Uh, you can sit around waiting with uh, orders to get out or you can just uh, look at your level two and aggressively get out. But it's this little break here. Uh, that I can always allow to retrace for the first quarter out of my position, and then if it gets to VWAP, uh, fair enough. Uh, I want to quickly go back over to that uh, UAME because, uh, seriously, one share? I, I'm just trying, uh, <laughs> whatever. I got a partial fill here, uh, but sorry to work into position on UAMY. Uh, is we're trying to get this roll over. Now, I would like it a heck of a lot better if it actually breaks below this little wedge that's being formed. Uh, 65 is my, I know the high of the day shows 63 here, but 65 is the level from yesterday that I care much more about uh, than this sort of random high wick that you see at 63. But it's going to start working into the short new AMY. I'd only reverse long above 65. 
No out yet on DraftKings, but it is time to get Money Talks with Brendan at the big screen. Hey guys, yeah, let's uh, talk currency world. We'll show you Bitcoin here right off the bat. Yeah, there's that move. Big, big pop here for Bitcoin. Back to 10,800, uh, which was uh, significant going back about a week or so ago. And then uh, also support uh, back in uh, August and, uh, and through September as well. Uh, so a decent level here for Bitcoin up. 2.5% so far today. We're back above that 10,800 level uh, that we've been mentioning, 10,900. Ethereum following suit as well, about the same uh, percent gain, but a uh, nice little pop there uh, for Bitcoin that we've seen affect a number of other things. Uh, lots of uh, positive numbers on here, but nothing you know overly huge. Turkish Lira, again, if you look at a daily chart of the Turkish Lira versus the US dollar, it's just like parabolic, straight higher, 0.8% again today for uh, that one. Swiss franc and uh, Japanese yen both uh, higher. Uh, British pound was actually lower on the day, but uh, has since gone back to the upside. So 129 for the pound, the Canadian dollar higher, a quarter of a percent. And the euro, the only one kind of struggling back to the downside. But uh, crypto's in focus today, definitely. Uh, the biggest moves coming from crypto land. Guys, back over to you. Yeah, crypto land is uh, is the land, that's for sure. Uh, just keeps going here. We're, we're, we're still trying to trade it. Uh, a little bouncy there on crypto land right now. Uh, okay, uh, Neo, we talked about that one. That's uh, downside right there. We did get out of that one. That's a fall in a hole there. So uh, I don't know what we'll do. We got cooked on that one. So uh, there we go. Nice little move on Neo uh, downside. And uh, we'll get out of the rest very, very soon. Let's go back to Nikola just to have a quick look here. 2551. This is a one minute chart. It looks like they could possibly want to bring break down uh what time is it like it's close to 11 o'clock right now i don't know man some of these stocks not really moving i don't want to throw away the money that we've already made here so um yeah that that those are like my feelings right here on the market we've made decent cash so far uh today we don't want to throw it all back but ccl is interesting because there was some levels there uh down here 50 65 a good another level to pick it up i think now we got to get a little more aggressive let's wait for 15 62 or three here uh this was the top we broke we broke we came back down and filled. So 1564 uh, is where my bid's going to be for CCL, guys. I, I just saw randomly in the chat what I, I'm going to assume was a suggestion for one of our videos that we're going to put out here. And uh, I, before, I, before I get to it, I, I do want to mention, I don't know if we even did this uh, yet. I know it's a wild, crazy morning. And look, the more active things get, uh, obviously, the more we're going to have to focus on what the market is because that's what we're trying to do for you guys. But... I want to remind you, uh, you don't always see him on the show uh, trading. You will see him uh, time to time, and you'll see him every single day, Arun, uh, updating you on what the futures are and what he's looking at in terms of the levels every single day. is a fantastic job. But you get to see what his journey is, uh, how he became a trader, how he got to where he was. And I remember Sean and I were listening to him uh, uh, do his, uh, his story, and it was very, very interesting for us to even hear, even though we know a, a good piece of it. So check that out on our Market Wisdom page. Valeria will drop the link in about 40 or 50 minutes or so, but that one is coming up from Arun. Right now, we have to go over to Brennan and not keep the man waiting. Uh, just seeing uh, Jinko Solar here. JKS, all-time highs this morning. Uh, Solar's uh, catching a little bit of a bit here through uh, yesterday's high there. 56.50 was uh, all-time highs. Look at the daily chart. Big move up uh, over the past couple of weeks for JKS, guys. All right, JKS. Uh, so just uh, quickly here, uh, Nicole asked uh, Neil Falling, where did I say I was buying? I actually haven't looked at Neil today. I think maybe you might be referring to Sean. I know, I think he meant, you mentioned Neil at one point. Uh, I haven't looked at it yet, so I don't want to just throw anything out there because uh, it would be my first look of the day on NIO. Uh, so don't, uh, if you thought that I said something about buying Neo, I haven't. I haven't even looked at the stock uh, at any point today. Uh, I did just get up. I want to update a couple of positions here because I just got out again at the low of the day on DPW. Uh, 275, a buyer stepped in. Uh, I took some shares out in front of it. I'm going to get out again in front of this. As long as, look, if... If I'm in the money and it's working to the downside and I see some uh, bids continuously step up at, at a price, that's going to be support. It's positive news on these names when they're gapping up. So when you're doing a retracement play, you have to consider there's actual people that might want to buy the thing on that day. So you identify those levels, and then if you have to, you'll get out in front of them, which I'm doing here on DPW at 275. Just seems prudent. I still have some of this position left. Uh, DraftKings is back below uh, 52, so taking some profit uh, when that quarter break, 52 quarter break happened for like 30 cents, feels like it's the right move because uh, DraftKings can't seem to get out of its own way. It's holding the low for now, but this bottom pick is going to need some help, maybe from the market, which is not cooperating right now. 
Yeah, tough market. Uh, tough market. Okay, oh, okay, CCL, I see you right now. Uh, looking to break there. I didn't even realize that I was looking at IBM there. Uh, I know Neil had an IBM play, and I missed it uh, to the downside. I mean, we were trash talking IBM all morning. Get our watch list, uh, and you'll find out why. Uh, 1578. I, I think this is a good spot here uh, to go long. So we'll go long, uh, Carnival, if it does break that uh, to the long side here. Uh, CCL. Someone asked, uh, do I think that Apple can ever get back to, to all time highs? Yeah, I mean, uh, Apple will get back to all-time highs. Not do I think it ever will. It will get back to all-time highs. Just a matter of where you want to get into that one. Uh, but, you know, take your, take your pick on that uh, on Apple. Luck and coffee, we do go a little bit long there. Uh, you know, long, long and out. One of the first trades we've made, we did trade that earlier. Not doing much, but uh, just to give you a little shout, uh, breaking now this little level right there on Luck and 525. And now we head to the high side there. So a nice little eight-cent winner making back some of that money uh, that we've lost on NI. Oh, yeah, uh, that's what it was, Neil. Uh, yeah, NIO, yeah, so we did try it, right? Uh, I, f I apologize uh, who asked about it. I'm not going to pick any more up. Uh, and again, this was actually a save. Uh, look, it's my biggest loser, and, that, and that's for sure. But the thing was, once it didn't break, we realized that, and we were able to get out and save half uh, of this loss. So that was actually a pretty good thing for me uh, overall there, Mr. Wicken. Uh, we talked about this one yesterday. Uh, I believe it was in the morning. Possibly not. Uh, this is a cloud name. NCNO, uh, NCNO on the NASDAQ, having quite the day. It was uh, later on, uh, maybe I saw the headline, in the afternoon, 2 p.m., in fact, straight higher. Uh, we just broke that uh, high, that uh, high from yesterday afternoon, 77.08. 3% for NCNO on the day. This is uh, getting into uh, recent high territory. $80 could be a problem for this one, though, guys. And Sino, uh, that's a there's a, like a Canadian twist to that. Uh, one of their big uh, big clients that came, uh, Canadian Bank here. Uh, that that Neo, I actually don't. For me, I don't really see anything. I mean, there's some consolidation, 2175. I don't know. Uh, I don't have any strong opinions on it myself in terms of a dip buy outside of maybe 2175 holding. But uh, I got one dip buy on, which is frustrating me uh, right now. So uh, I'm not gonna necessarily dip into Neo. I'm I'm literally sitting in. Uh, in half a dozen positions, guys. So I'm not going to uh, try to throw into anything haphazardly, but uh, I need to go back and look at Plug. This was a good one yesterday. Thought maybe it would have the juice uh, to make another move, and if it did, it would be fantastic if it could get uh, through to that tw uh, 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 20 level, a uh, 20 even. Uh, the consolidation, not a bad place to be consolidating above previous close. Uh, it closed at like the 18 quarter mark. Uh, now we're just basically holding that range in the, to 1850. Trying to gear up, and again, I think it's the same problem that uh, DraftKings is having. A little bit of a lag in the market uh, right now. My shorts in the money, DraftKings slightly, slightly in the money. I do want to also go over to Peloton. Uh, this, was a, this was a good one uh, this morning for me uh, to the short side trade, uh, but I did try a break long. Uh, thankfully, I, 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 I gave you the reasons why I wanted to stop, which is shy at the low of the day. It just broke fresh lows, uh, so I probably wasn't pessimistic enough on Peloton. And the only thing about this was... If you have a daily chart that looks like this, uh, if you go back to your 15, you're seeing so many consecutive up days. You roll over at a psychological level like 120, uh, then you fail at the previous high as well. That's a short I'm going to take every single day. I just, I wasn't anticipating a break of uh, afternoon support at 115, but if that happens, um, you know, Peloton maybe could come back down to like 110, 111 area, uh, but it has to break that 115 first. That hasn't happened yet. Age is finally going down below that uh, 275, it looks like. So I might start looking at that stock again. That's my negative stock of the day. So I'm trying to be very, very patient if I'm going to jump back into it. Peloton, however, a 115 break is going to be hard uh, to resist to the downside. It's getting pretty close. Yeah, we just went more long here, luck and coffee, uh, and just to see if we can get uh, a little luck uh, on this stock. We hit the long, hit the long, hit the long again right now. So uh, we're long this name, 11 million shares over here on the OTC markets. Let's see how high this thing wants uh, to fly. That is luck and coffee. Neil comes all the way back, so uh, no surprise there. But again, uh, a little light on, on Neo. So uh, darn it, I just wish we didn't lose that trade. Uh, it's been such a good day for that. We're going to get out of some uh, luck and coffee right now. At 47 uh, if we can uh, sitting there it's very tough uh, if you haven't traded pink sheets before, it is tough to get in and out uh, of some of these positions. So uh, you got to be very, very patient over there. Shout out uh, to Mr. Jeffrey Mendel. Uh, okay, what I was saying about Apple before as well. Uh, guys, Apple uh, was a stock that you have to buy the dips. When I gave you JP Morgan at 94, the same tweet I gave you guys Apple at 106. So that was only two weeks ago. The boys here on production know about that one. Uh, so let's go over here. Valeria at the big screen with Europe. What's up, Veep?
Hey guys, welcome to the European update. Europe mostly in a positive territory, though Warsaw is down 0.96%. Russia almost flat down 0.02%. Germany is up 1.16% and Britain is up 0.84%. British Airways parent IG is a positive mover, up 11%. That's all with the Europe and I'll keep you updated. Back to traders. All right. Not much happening in Europe, I guess. Uh, okay, oh, boom! I just got a big note right here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this on the screen. Uh, I'll show it right here. Ah, you probably can. How do I make this bigger? Uh, there it goes. Yup, this is the wife, uh, the, by the way. Hi, wife, uh, I love you. Hopefully you watch this. Uh, yup, I'm making chicken pot pie and apple pie. So boom for that one. Winner, winner, chicken pot pie dinner. So there it is right there. We hit that uh, for you. Thank you uh, for that. And I uh, hells to the yeah. Apple pie for Thanksgiving, chicken pot pie for tonight. Let's go, Superman. You Look, you can't be Superman without the significant other, so thank you so, so much. You're my Lois Lane. Let's go. Feed me, feed me. We keep going uh, here in the stock market. We reversed the short on luck and coffee now, uh, and now we're five cents in the money on, this, on the south side on the stock. Let's go, guys. Big day, chicken pot pie coming. I love pot pie. I got to admit, when Thanksgiving comes around, it, 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 for reference here, Sean, yep. uh, Canadian Thanksgiving yep, is on yep. Monday. I know you guys, yeah, November, uh, but here Thanksgiving is on Monday. Uh, the show will be on because uh, the U.S. market's open. We're open and we're doing the show, guys. Uh, but uh, Canadian Thanksgiving coming around. Uh, but I am, I'm a pumpkin pie uh, a dude. I, I can eat an entire pumpkin, pumpkin pie in one sitting. That's what my mom would do. She would send me one at university, or sorry, two. One uh, that I could like eat the entire thing that night. Uh, and then one that I can eat for the rest of the week. Uh, we're eating some shorts here in UAMY, but that's actually, this is a nice little rollover. I talked about uh, not being bullish on it till it broke 65. Uh, I took the short on the 60 level. I couldn't get the breakdown, uh, unfortunately, and this first fill was literally for like one pet, one, one share, which was ridiculous. Uh, but I, I like this one all the way into VWAP, but if it breaks this 54, I want to have something on board in case there's a bigger flush to the downside. Uh, but it's not the downside play that I'm happy about here. It's the upside play. Potentially, a knock on fake wood here because these tables are not real wood. I did confirm that. Uh, if we can get past VWAP, I'll take some more shares off of DraftKings. It's held this bottom. Uh, just looking at the pattern from yesterday, it's hard not to stare this in the face. This 51.65 area. Then if you can consolidate above that uh, issue price at 52 for the offering, uh, and then maybe break back up. It closed at 53.30, so that's why I do have an order uh, here to take it out in case it goes sideways at that price. But now back in the money over 50 pennies. I did take some off for 30 cents. Uh, probably should have uh, stuck to my guns and held out for anything northbound of 50 cents. It's now starting to move up. I am going to be all flat if it gets into this chop range, and that's 53.65 all the way up to 54.50. So that's where I start, be, I start to think about a short in DraftKings, but I want to play this long into the top end of the range just in case it wants to literally repeat history. doesn't always happen, but could here in DraftKings. Yeah, DraftKings, love DraftKings. I'm an investor in DraftKings uh, in the 30s, but pissed off that I didn't get any out there in the 60s. Should have. Uh, we'll see. It could re-head re, you know, re back up there. Was not expecting, uh, of course. Mmm, pie, says Russell Jackson. Yeah, pie, pie, pie. I uh, love that pumpkin pie. Love that apple pie. I, 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 like, ap I like pumpkin more than apple, so. Uh, but she'll make that. Again, we're going to go visit our family. So, obviously, Thanksgiving is uh, a huge deal here uh, in Canada, as it is south side as well in the U.S. Look, look, look at this, guys. Uh, one... 1500 here the nasdaq taking off let's read let's relook at some of these positions here uh plug we had uh, down it's looking like it wants to break this level again i think this is an opportunity to maybe go long again here on plug oh my god don't tell me i missed ccl i'm just remembering now and i didn't put the order out uh no it did not break yet okay so ccl still 1578 that didn't go yet um but uh yeah everything making making moves right now uh DraftKings big move to the upside good hold on that one i had to get out of that i don't have it we should still have that but uh that's a good one as well microsoft msft uh, right around now uh 110 you guys know when we like this one uh, we tend to hit it but it's 11.05, uh, uh, but can this market continue to go? Oh, okay, here we go. Some bottoms right here uh, on Microsoft, 210 and change. This could be a good spot here, uh, 209.85 uh, as our out. Let's go along, Microsoft. Uh, just to update you, another leg down on DPW. So I was taking shares off of that 275, waiting for it to either break back up or I can trail it out or break down. And then the next level of consolidation, 
I'll start getting some more shares out. So a 75 did break. I uh, still have a short here at 307. Uh, looking to see if we can get right back to that 255 previous close. So I'll try to take some out like 10 cents shy of that. And then the ultimate target has always been that 55 mark. Look, it, it's it's not, there's no, no rocket science to it, but this setup, I'm never expecting that uh, it's going to give the entire, more than the entire move back. Uh, so I usually will not hang on to shares past that unless it's a stock dipping below a dollar, in which case sometimes it just gets too spicy uh, to that downside not to take a look at it. Uh, continuing to go up, though, however, getting happy about this DraftKings. Uh, that long working out for us uh, rather nicely. Just had to be very, very patient with it. Uh, DraftKings breaking above 52.50. Uh, 50. Finally, the chart loading. So it gets a VWAP here. Now, once we break this level, this 52.60 area, uh, I'll try to get out on the north side of it between these two levels, uh, uh, 5260 and 52, uh, uh, 53 even. That's like a, tw a 40 cent range. If it does fail back down, I would just maybe trail some of it uh, to that same price for like a 60 to 80 cent win on DraftKings. Still holding half the position. See if I can't test back up to previous close. Okay, uh, you guys know we're long Microsoft here, 210.06, uh, just 210.20. Uh, Brennan? Uh, Fortress Biotech, guys, just uh, popped up on the scanner here through day highs, I guess it was. Uh, 470 uh, got taken out there. 9.5% for FBIO. Uh, once a high flyer in the biotech space, but uh, coming back to this recent high uh, around that uh, same 475 to 480 area for FBIO, guys. Okay, FIBO, don't know much. Somebody, I know, only because you guys came back to this look, someone in the chat, uh, and I saw you, uh, uh, I don't know if you were making fun of or saying, why do I have, or why do we both have keyboards from like 1980? Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, because this was the keyboard when it started. Like the keys are like they're a little bit bigger, and just you feel it a little bit better. Like they're higher up. It's just a more comfortable trade. Like new ones, I don't have an example for you, but some are on the floor where they're like little depressed. Keystroke error rate for me, if I switch to one of those, is like three x. So uh, I literally have backups for this. Sometimes you used to need like a special adapter for these old keyboards. Uh, I keep I keep this style. It's what works for me. And the reality is, I know a trader who used to travel with one of these if they were trading somewhere else. You got to do what works for you and what's comfortable. And you, you you can't really care if it was pink or purple. I would still use it because it's all about not making keystroke errors, which still happen to everybody. I don't care who you are. Uh, you will make mistakes. And if you know how to limit them. You got to do what it takes. I don't care how goofy it looks or how old these are or how expensive they'll probably be in another five or ten years. Uh, I'm going to keep going with it because it works for me. Yeah, we've already got some uh, so, some reserve ones there. Uh, yeah, mine's uh, this black one, Keytronic. Uh, there, if you guys want to notice, Keytronic. Uh, go pick them up, but don't pick them all up because if we run out, we need more. Uh, okay, so yeah, I, I agree, man. It's just about the feel. You know, you, we don't have uh, machines here. It's Ding, 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 hitting keys. So you got to have that good feel uh, on for sure. Uh, Eli Lilly coming back down there. Russell Jackson, keep it old school, man. Russell Jackson just continues uh, today. Thank you so much for all that. The Aussie dollar. What up, Russell Jackson? Uh, good friend of the show, of course, uh, been on. So we'll have you back on uh, anytime, Russell. Um, okay, Roku still near that 220 level. Uh, let's have a quick look at that. Uh, 220, 220 high side now. Uh, but this is what we're talking about. Failing now. Look at the NASDAQ. Up, up, up. Roku down 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 getting to those levels uh, we gave you some of these breakdown levels down here uh, 220 flat damn it uh, should have hit that sorry 220.50 was the bottom of the day there now we're at 220 flat so that's a 50 cent win you're ticking down to 75 now uh, Roku losing some steam here not really sure why other than the fact that uh, it's just so heated uh, lately I don't there's going to be really no levels of the downside this was a gap fill here so you could fill back the other way down to 212 if the Nasdaq crumbles like it looks like it wants to do right here Roku would be one of the ones on my watch Beyond Meat also guys was near that 200 level it's holding up like look it's holding up a hell of a lot better uh than roku so for some reason roku going southbound there we're not used to that so uh let's have a look at maybe a little longer uh time frame and figure out if we can find some levels but uh, if we can ever get back into this area i think that's worth a short against this 221.70 but roku falling southbound a little bit we did give you this out just in case you were long was down here 221 so apparently I'm the only person that, that didn't know uh, that the difference between those keyboards is mechanical versus membrane. Uh, thank you both Lucas on our production crew and Brendan for uh, uh, throwing it in our little chat here. So there you go. Uh, test it out. I like mechanical keyboards apparently. That's the actual word for it there. And gamers use them too. So uh, you, you make big money gaming. Uh, you make big money trading. You use the tools that work best. Uh, I just got some shares out of DraftKings on the, on the north side of VWAP like I mentioned here. So 
just shy of a dollar winner on that on this uh, this uh, second quarter of the position. I still like it to get back to this top area, this previous close, 53.30 or so. Market's not going, but DraftKings uh, seems to have caught a bit of a bottom uh, on its own. Uh, as far as Roku goes, I mean, uh, I got out of it, which, and it doesn't look pretty, and it's it, there's no way it's going to look pretty because I sort of a, a give up like a dollar fifty to two dollars worth of upside. Then I trail out when there's a bounce up to two twenty seven. But again, I had some signals for me on my read that uh, this buy that we took here off twenty four uh, was going to be uh, not a winning trade directionally. It is what it is. I could have definitely done better, but I'm happy that I'm not still in the long. I was hoping that it would actually catch a bounce off of this 220, uh, 220 area and then pass back above the pre-market high for the another breakout at 22. That hasn't happened, so I'm going to be hands-off Roku until I get another signal. And if it wants to give you anywhere close to yesterday's close, I mean, that's an obvious place, but... That's $7 away, so very unlikely here on Roku. Uh, AGE is consolidating below 275, getting close to me dipping back into the short side trade in that one. My only uh, negative stock of the day and definitely my worst read, and it's actually not even close, guys, because uh, I had some good levels on this name. I just didn't trade it very well here today. But it does seem like this uh, 275, 280 area could be the key one if it holds below. The retracement might be in on AGE. That's in the Nizi Arca, formerly the Amex uh, market. Yeah, don't be so uh, hard on yourself there. There are going to be times where uh, we have the right read, but we have the wrong shares and so on and so forth. Um, and then, we, you know, we're forced to get out. I mean, that's the thing. We're trying to stay as disciplined as we can here. Not trying. I, th I believe we are. And if levels break, we get out, right? Neil had a different plan on DraftKings than I did, allowed him to hold this a little bit longer. And again, so you got to trade your plan. I saw something on uh, yesterday. There was a comment that, hey, you guys don't like it when we go opposite. But again, we try to explain why we're in there and, and what, what our targets are and whatnot to give you just that little extra confidence uh, on what we're doing. And uh, yeah, Microsoft, what up, baby? Uh, 210.06 right now. So there it is. So money bags here, if we can get out uh, of Microsoft, a nice little right now, 25 cent win. Normally that's what we'll take. Uh, I'm waiting a little bit higher. NASDAQ making moves upside right now. So uh, watch out for this. I don't know. Maybe did it just fail there? I don't know. Uh, we'll wait on Microsoft. But here it comes, man. 210.39 is where I'm sitting. No idea why 39, but we are sitting right there. I may adjust this just to get out. NASDAQ pushing, and uh, it's having a little bit of a problem. Let's take our 25 cents and see if we can't get more on the backside of this trade. Uh, someone literally made a joke in the chat, so I apologize for laughter. Someone's saying, we should get a sponsor for these keyboards. If Keytronic is still in business and wants to do that, good for them. Uh, that'd be fun. Uh, uh, we'll see if we can have a little bit of a winning trade here in AGE. It'll be the first one if it is. I just, just got into some shares in the consolidation here. Uh, picked some up. Uh, we'll see. Look, we'll, we'll see what it wants to do here. But I'm trying. Uh, uh, if it's want, going to make a move, it has to uh, first break through this 240 consolidation. I don't think that I want to be heavily taking anything off uh, off of uh, off this trade. But I can't give it past 290. Not even three dollars. Even uh, 290 would be any kind of a hard stop for me. Uh, AGE looks like it's going to be uh, possible retrace in play. But just keep in mind, my read hasn't been good. The levels have been key. So if I say 290. And I'm short and getting out. Maybe it's not even a bad place to go long. The way my reads have gone, that's probably the right answer. And don't be so hard on yourself. Uh, yeah, we, we, we got to uh, find the winners. But, you know, Neil, the thing is, too, it's 11.15, right? So uh, we do have to try to uh, pare back some of our expectations here. Um, those of you that know how we trade Microsoft, there it is, man. Uh, another win. Another one. DJ Khaled. Uh, I, I don't know if anybody's there. Jarhead, some of you guys that follow me uh, on my... Microsoft trades, and there it is. Microsoft <laughs> continues to be the one man. 35 cent win right here on Softy. Let's just keep on going. Bang, bang. Uh, there it is. We did it again. Britney Spears style. What's up, Brendan? Uh, another one to look at here, guys. Uh, Springworks. I feel like we talked about this yesterday, but uh, I can't see a headline for it. Springworks Therapeutics. Another one from that group had a large, uh, to say the least, offering. Uh, 4. Mil or 4.9 million share offering announced yesterday, but just popping up here from 53 to 56 on a volume spike. So uh, SWTX up 6% today. SWTX, uh, add that one to the list. You always want to make sure, this happens to me every single day. I'll go back and we, you always want to review your trades, uh, but uh, we also review some of the names that Brendan brings to us that maybe I looked at, maybe I didn't look at. It feels like there's always one uh, that was certainly worth the trade that I didn't get into. I haven't traded beyond uh, meat. And uh, uh, again, this was another one. It wasn't on the watch list. However, 
it's not that we only go through names in the watch list when we're doing our pre-market preparations. Uh, news hit on Beyond Meat uh, right before the open. Brennan got it to you right away. Uh, there was a bit of an uptick that got faded. I thought maybe there'd be a push into $2. That might be an opportunity uh, to short into it. Uh, it. That obviously didn't happen, as you can see here. It stalled out at 197.50. Let's watch out this 192 bottom, both in the pre-market. Uh, also opening range, double bottom, right around 191.50 to 192. Could be some support in Beyond Meat. Uh, like I said, uh, AGE, I'm not giving it past uh, to the 290 mark, not the 3 even. I will take some more shares. I started at 67. Uh, an average price of 75 is about what I'd like to have in the event that 290 breaks, expecting a couple of cents of slippage as well. So about 20 pennies I want to uh, have of risk for that because I think 240 is resistance. That's 30 pennies down, guys. So let's watch out for AGE. Uh, one other one, I, I'm sort of glossing over it. It's a penny stock doesn't move too much. Uh, that you, Amy. I already took some shares out on the 60 short in front of 57. I would get some more out in front of VWAP, but uh, I would definitely be thinking break long at 65. That's the only way I'm going long in the stock unless it gets back down to 45 cents, and then we can catch a breakout from there uh, through 50. Going to ride this short. It's literally not moving right now. Very slow action, and the volume is only 8.4 million shares, which seems like a lot. Trust me, that's not a lot for a penny stock uh, that was doing at least three times that by this time uh, yesterday. Okay, and uh, 50 cents now as Microsoft uh, just continues to go. We just tweeted that one out. Trying to hit something that we haven't hit in a while here. Uh, what about just explode the money? That's what we're doing right now today. Uh, but we're not lighting the money on fire. We're simply putting it in our pocket today. So uh, that's a good one. It's been a great, a fantastic week, man. Uh, I was telling Greg, like, how October uh, for me is so much different than September. We're on fire right now uh, this month. And you guys know that. Follow us on Twitter. You're seeing everything. And I just tweeted out all of the positions uh, that are all the names that I've had today so you guys can follow along uh, with some of those and see. Um, okay, Microsoft top side. I'm just going to hold this one. If we break back down uh, to 210.25, we'll get out of the rest uh, and then only take 20 cents on that piece. But there's 30 cents and there's 40 cents. So now we'll hold to the high side here, softy. Uh, high of the days uh, happened right at the open on Microsoft. So that's 210.88. So we'll put an order up here, 210.79, uh, because that happens to be, unfortunately, the year that I was born. Uh, so we'll put that 210, 79. You may see me get a lot of 79 fills. I always put those out there. Uh, I don't know why, just good luck. We'll see uh, to the high side there. But 18 years experience, uh, I didn't start when I was zero. So we'll keep going on that. Uh, 210, uh, 79, we'll put the order out. But it's been a big day, man. Uh, luck and coffee, Bitcoin, BTC. Uh, Brendan's talked about that a, a couple times today. Eli Lilly, man, we destroyed. I mean, Eli Lilly, one of my top stocks, uh, just took here 50, uh, 52.50, then the 53. That's the big hammer sock right there we gave that one to you in the pre-market now it's fading off you got to watch some of these levels but uh right now not much to look at for me i, I got two uh, things go for ahead, you here yeah. sean one uh i'm just going to note here that 440 on tesla oh that God. i thought maybe a breakout clearly it's uh, more of a resistance play so as someone who usually goes short off resistance uh not having it on tesla i just didn't want to step in front of that train but uh 79s for an out there's a logic to this right if you like quarters and 50s and 75s as, as areas if other people have stops uh, a long break through 75 you're taking advantage of other people's stops that get slipped if they if, if 75 breaks and they're crossing an order up uh to say 80 or 85 to make sure they get a fill that momentum can get you out at 79 so uh if you're the early money with a good position, like if Tesla were breaking uh, through 440, and I want it out on the other side of that, maybe you have like a, uh, maybe you have a long at 35, let's say if it breaks upside, you can always have your order in that first dollar on the other side. So if it makes the break, use other people panicking out and their stop for liquidity to get out uh, on the way up for a better price. It's one of those little old tricks uh, uh, that traders have, uh, I shouldn't say old traders, or old tricks, or it's kind of a relevant one, but I like that, Larry. I've done it at the same time here. Usually I'll use like 77, 78 instead of like 75 even. I love that look. Uh, just some education on the fly here, guys. Brendan, what do you got? Uh, there was uh, an IPO today, uh, guys. Fubo TV, sports online uh, sports streaming uh, platform. Uh, Fubo, F-U-B-O in New York. It is down. Uh, looks like just, though. We opened uh, just under 11 there. It ran up a little bit, but decent volume on this. About $2 million. It's a $180 million IPO. Uh, but uh, doing decent volume for Fubo, guys. I saw um, someone asking me, Mr. Sean, why do we buy Microsoft? Well, A, you buy it in your long-term account because it's awesome. Uh, and then B, uh, why did we buy it here? Look, 
Big movements up. We missed it through VWAP. That's fine. I probably don't take it anyways because there's some bunched up action right here. We noticed the NASDAQ. Okay, huge strong move here. Um, anything else uh, happening right now? I see some stuff about Trump and some banks, uh, but not American banks. Uh, Pelosi. Oh, there it is from, I guess, Zero Hedge. Pelosi, uh, last negative test was. They want to know when that was. Okay. Uh, anyways, maybe that's not it. But here we go. Microsoft the move. Okay, what I was talking about here was just this break right here. Once we saw this, 209.85, we missed it. Then we identified that there was some bottoms down here. Uh, and then right here as well. So 210.06, that's literally, if I can draw the line, I'll draw okay. it and then we'll go through it. Uh, Brendan, please interrupt if you see anything. Uh, some of these stocks are going uh, a little bit crazy right now. This is the level just right here uh, quickly before I go. Uh, bottoms here, made a little bit of a move there. We saw the NASDAQ going crazy. So we got elevated to the top side, Mr. Wickens. Uh, Pelosi is uh, speaking right now uh, in an interview. So just a uh, heads up, guys, caution if you are in. Uh, any of these uh, stocks that are going to be affected by aid bill, uh, they're saying no airline bill without a bigger package. That's from Nancy Pelosi, guys. Okay, well, then I, I guess I, I guess no package means people don't get their stimulus tech, check and, and gamble it because DraftKings just came off as well. I mean, I literally got what was top wick of this move and it just came right back to that 52 mark. So, uh, look, it's my level. Uh, I'll get right back into it. I don't think it's nearly as affected as the airlines and the travel plays are going to be here. So if it's hopefully just a little bit of a sympathy sell in here, I'm going to use the same level we were before. I uh, like an average price like that a couple of times and still have the same average price around 85. Uh, so we'll do that here in the north side uh, of 52 on DraftKings. But wow, uh, I mean, that just came off very quickly a dollar as well. Yeah, um, okay, so we did go short AAL, but I'm only going to use right back here, man, 13.20 as the out. Uh, we got short way too late. I actually didn't even, I just punched, a, like I went over to AAL and go short like that. Uh, so we started a starter position on AAL, but I, again, depending on what this news is about the airline bill, the COVID relief, I'm not going to hold this. AAL could easily go back uh, to here. We saw what happened on uh, Trump's tweet storm the other day, sending the market down, and then the very next day, the market's up 700 or 600 points. Uh, so we are going to use that. Uh, as a little bit of absorption there and hope that uh, this does come back down. But I can easily, with the way today's going, uh, afford this 10 cent hit. So uh, not a very big hit. We'll wait to see on the downside if we can actually break through uh, 13 here. We'll take a little bit off uh, if we can back to flat and then hold the rest for a 13 break. You have something else, Brendan? Uh, it looks like uh, basically what's happening is Nancy Pelosi saying that there is, Trump was saying that he is in favor of a standalone bill just for airlines. Pelosi now saying no airline bill unless there is a bigger COVID relief bill as well. So we're back to stalemate, it sounds like, guys. Yeah, and like, you know what? We, we don't, yeah, we don't, we only talk politics here at, uh, uh, to the extent that it's going to move the markets. And obviously, this is going to be a market move where the airlines are uh, going to be under pressure for that. And there's going to be some other sympathy plays that you're going to want to watch uh, as well. It has been a wild and fantastic and fun and exciting morning, but I cannot believe uh, it's 11.23, and uh, apologies, I have like a very small, you, can't, you guys can't see it, uh, a little bit of a graphic here that uh, uh, shows me what's going on in the program, but I didn't see our little uh, 1,000 like uh, weird dude that shows up, or I didn't see the moonwalk, 1,500, I definitely didn't see the space soup, uh, a spaceship or a suit or whatever space suit that uh, Valeria rocks, and one of you guys tweeted at me, that we usually get better uh, love for the likes when we check out Valeria's shoe game. Uh, I don't think we have that one set up yet, but it's up to you, Valeria. Rumor has it we get to 2,000 if you show off what kicks you're wearing. I don't no, think it's Air Force Ones kicks. today, uh, but it, it is what it is. We're, how are we doing for likes? I'm kind of curious. Uh, that 2,000 mark, again, it's a psychological thing for us. We have a lot of fun. If we can get to 2K, it's a fun number to get to, and it's around one. And, and I'm sort of superstitious. When we get to it, it's definitely good things in the market. Uh, Valeria, please. Tell me we're past at least 1,000 or the 1,500 mark. Well, Neil, great job. 15,000 likes. Here's the moonwalk. But I would love to remind our viewers that likes are absolutely for free for you guys and priceless to us. So please smash the like button so we also can see Valeria Astronaut dance. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's why, Neil, that's why I came up with that. Let's check <laughs> Valeria's shoes out uh, because I noticed early on uh, that she does have Air Force Ones. Um, and then now since then, obviously, uh, you've noticed as well. But today it is not Air Force One. So there it is. Okay, uh, AAL here, guys. A big move to back to the downside now. Uh, we do cancel that. Uh, we're going to wait for some O2s now. Uh, what up, Russell Jackson there? Uh, he wants more money uh, from Russell Jackson. 
uh, just for another Valeria Floss. So if you guys have that uh, Valeria Floss thing, please hit it. Uh, if you have it, Valeria, hit it whenever you want. Uh, that is perfectly fine. Thank you, Russell Jackson. There it is. Uh, I've never seen her wear those red dresses or have such orange skin. Uh, but good little look there. Uh, flossing it. And Russell, you have that sweater. So uh, good job. So we get hit out there at 20. We notice that it doesn't go up. So we get back in. So right now, just washing back and forth here. Uh, short and loser out. Retake the short. And now... We are in the money. So now we keep going uh, as AAL trying to make moves to the downside. Oh, why did I cancel? I did have a 1308 bid out there that I did cancel. So uh, bad trade there. Uh, should have had a bid. We'll put a bid at 1308 again, guys. Yeah, I didn't actually get into more shares of DraftKings. I, you can see I did try to catch it on the way back up but when it bounced off of 52. Uh, I didn't step in front of the sword, so didn't get that entry point. If it wants to consolidate here, maybe I'll look for uh, some sideways action to get me more shares. No need to rush into it. Uh, somehow, uh, AGE's, AGE, I shouldn't just, uh, AGE's still doing nothing. So, uh, sideways consolidation, I like this one a little bit better. It's that time of day where things can calm down. And I had the level that I'm working off of that 290 Money, area. Yeah. So, uh, into the short here, got 73 short. If it rolls here, I think we go 240 uh, first out, uh, sort of in front of that area, maybe around 250 as well. And if it gets back to $2, uh, fantastic. This was an 84 cent stock yesterday, so uh, it went up uh, like a 400 percent move. Uh, turnaround of four dollars. Uh, let's see if we can't get a deeper retracement than this. Lots of room to go to the downside on EG. Come on, AAL. Uh, yeah, so we're going right over to the news right now uh, in trading. Some give me some old ones. I'm, at, I'm there. Boom! We're at old ones right there, and that's what we're doing. Face slap today. Bye bye, AAL. This is another 20 cent win on this one. We go short. We go short. Boom, boom, boom to the downside right now. And uh, like I tweeted today, what am I not trading? Micro caps, small caps, Bitcoin, pink sheets for you. Now we step into AAL. We've got Softy on the look. 25 cent winner and still tanking. This is what we do on the show, man. Jaw drop for these victories. What's up? Hopefully you guys are liking this. Thank you so much for the super chats. I hope we're fattening your pockets today. Look at AAL. Your boy has this one. We are short right now at 1318. A 30 cent win right there on board for AAL. Unfortunately, we did get out of a little bit, but we do get right back in. And now, kaboom to the downside. What a victory, Neil. Uh, these are great days. Uh, I don't know if you have anything on, but wow, AAL to the downside. Booyah. I'll review. I was going to put up a chart uh, here, but my chart's just frozen. But uh, AGE uh, sliding in the money now. 10. I want 25 cents for first leg out. DraftKings still in the money, but flat. Uh, DPW were in the money. OEG, OPTT, and UAMI uh, also in the money. But I was going to show you uh, Regeneron. I can go to the one minute chart here. Uh, some consolidation. It made a bottom at six, 600. Now, we talked about this one possibly pulling in on the, on the, uh, the bump that it got up. Uh, of obviously, uh, uh, Trump getting their cocktail and possible emergency use uh, authorization uh, going through. Nothing uh, firm yet. But if this breaks back above like 608, uh, it has made a low at six, 600, held that twice. Let's see if 608 can break back to the upside. Could be a breakout trade in Regeneron uh, approaching here. Brendan, uh, what do you got? Uh, yeah, this is a group move, obviously, for uh, the airlines. Here's uh, save as well to the downside in a big way. We'll flip over and look at Delta. Just made a new low on the day. Uh, volume still coming into Delta, $32 here. Uh, big time support level. So let's see what happens. Yeah, Nancy Pelosi pulling the plug on the airlines, guys. All right, guys, and here it is. I mean, look, it's going to be fruit salad time already. We haven't touched this yet. It's 11.30, but uh, as you guys know, it just keeps on going. we got a full fruit salad here today. I don't even know how this became a thing, but uh, glad that it did. Uh, we, we know we have a caterer here. Today's fruit salad brought to you by blueberries. We love the blueberries today. And look, right now we're in a 20-cent winner on Microsoft to the long side. We're in a 20, 30-cent uh, winner right now uh, on AAL to the downside, but we're pretty light uh, right now in those positions. So you can see answering here at Twitter. Thank you so much for everything. Our chat, our everything going. Different stocks popping off right here as well. But yeah, what a big day. Thank you so much uh, to everyone. Everybody today uh, for all of the love as uh, yeah it's been a big one man I actually uh, just looking forward to this afternoon I mean there's some action now in the market so 30 minutes left in the show but we trade all the time and what a great little out there on Microsoft was 21050 we're gonna only give this one back to 210 I'd like to hold a little bit long in case the Nasdaq says eh, whatever to that uh, to that uh, headline there about stimulus, uh, but we will get out at 210. Again, small, it'll be a six cent loss, nothing compared to that 50 cent win, guys.
And it's uh, about time. Here comes the flush uh, into that first level for me on AGE. Uh, not, it wasn't the best trader for me uh, off that little bit of an open break. And I say a little bit of an open break when the stock went from $1.60 uh, to $4 to four dollars even. Uh, but it is starting to come back in. I'll be out of some when it breaks 250 or at least gets uh, down to 250 And then that break, I'll take some more shares off. Uh, I can tell you DraftKings is coming right back to that 52 level. So it's got to defend that. For now, let's go to Brendan. Uh, he's got some news for us. Uh, just checking on switchback energy acquisition. Yeah, one of the SPACs. Not seeing anything as far as news, but uh, big volume spike here for SBE, up 5.8% now. Uh, back above that 1475 area, which was a decent level as well for uh, SBE. Going to keep looking here, guys. Roku. I uh, want to remind everybody, uh, as the futures start to come down, here's my little segue to that. Every morning, uh, Arun uh, comes on the show, gives you his ideas. This guy has been trading in the futures for uh, you know, over a decade here, so it's fantastic information when you get it. You hear us reference the ES and the NASDAQ all the time, but you haven't had a chance to hear his journey. You heard mine, you heard Brendan's, you heard Sean's, you heard Valeria's, which I know you guys love. So check that one out. It's being dropped today. I know that link is going to be forthcoming uh, any minute now, and I know you should be excited for it because it was definitely fun to hear, even though I know a little bit of that story. So uh, check it out on the Market Wisdom page as it comes. Uh, haven't talked about this name yet, and it just turned negative. Now, keep in mind in Boeing, uh, it already had a big flush, and I'll quickly go to if I, my 15 will work here. Uh, it already had a dual, a double leg flush uh, a couple of sessions ago, and it's that consolidation area, or at least the bottom end of it, uh, that's breaking right now. Uh, if it does make another move to the downside, uh, Boeing, this is one for me, the bottom pick in front of that 160. Uh, it was uh, both, on the, both on Trump pulling the plug uh, a bit of a low here at that price. And then now with Pelosi pulling the plug again, I would suspect that some buying might dip into uh, uh, Boeing in front of that level. So in anticipation of any kind of a drop, it might be worth having that one as an alert for like a 161. Let's see if you can't get like a $3 scalp on the way back up. A little rubber band action just in case this move gets a little out of hand, which it certainly could. The afternoons have been crazy. Might be another one here today, and you want to be prepared to pick up some uh, fantastic prices if you can. And Boeing might be a good one on a day trade around 160 to 161. Okay, guys. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's just falling down today. Uh, try to catch it. Where is it? Uh, we've been catching it all day, man. Uh, here's AAL making new lows right now, down to 80, 40 cents in the money uh, on that one. We just crushed Luckin again here. Short 70s out in the 50s. So another great trade there uh, happening for us. But here goes AAL. Yes, sir. We are at the highest spot we've been on all day. Hot dogs for you. Hot dogs for everybody. Uh, I'm not, I, I guess, I'm not sure why we invented that, but hot dogs everywhere right here. As look at this trade. Do, 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 all the way to the downside, guys. Um, is IBM a buy? Uh, to me, we can check out the price levels for you, but I would say no. I've bought IBM in my own account, and I'm actually tired of that stock. But solid dividend, new management over there. Um, they, they just got the new CEO about a year ago, maybe eight six to eight months ago maybe uh, as well. So you can check out that. I love that they're getting into the cloud space. Uh, they have Watson as well. So there, there are some possibilities there. Uh, but what a big day it's been here today, guys. Uh, we'll just keep on counting that cash for you and looking for different opportunities. Uh, Microsoft does come out. Big trade for us today on Softy, that's for sure. I gave you why we got in. We did hold that against the Pelosi news there. Uh, but whatever, because that's a six cent hit. And this is a 40 cent win right now. So we may get out of some AAL right now. It looks like it's trying to tick uh, lower here, but 12.73. Let's do some more work here on the downside. Obviously, we're a lot lower than we were yesterday, but your boy hit it and crushed it. So, I mean, that's just what we do. Slaying dragons left, right, and center around here, guys. Yeah, I think there's a trade at 130 uh, on IBM. I mean, it was kind of that like uh, sleepy, choppy area it was in for like a $10 range. Uh, for what was literally like three months. Uh, that's, that's where the break actually ends up happening. So if it comes back in, it's already held it once. Uh, you know, I mean, similar to what we're looking at at DraftKings, which, by the way, only half of that trade has worked. The other half is literally break even as it's trying to hold that 52. Uh, IBM could make another bounce. And I didn't have the, uh, you know, I didn't have the read to short it uh, up here thinking it was going to come all the way back to the low. Obviously, that's going to end up being the right call. Uh, but if IBM bounces in front of 130, uh, you get some sideways action, a consolidation at 31, it's not a bad trade, uh, I don't think. I would certainly I'd be looking at it. I am actually looking at it. And I, and I already had a stop, which I did go ahead and cancel uh, from earlier that was going to be, if it slammed down hard uh, earlier, like in the first half an hour of the day, I was going to uh, catch a bit of a bid long in front of it and then have a stop out at 160. 
Now that it's around lunchtime, I'm not going to automatically do it. I need to see uh, particularly some price action, holds consolidation, and maybe a bit of a volume kick up uh, into the long side, and then I would get into a long in front of that 130. Otherwise, I'll probably stay away from it. I want to update you guys on a few things here. Only 25 minutes to go before we're out of here. The market's not going anywhere. But UAMY... I mentioned I wouldn't be bullish on, on this penny stock unless it uh, gave a break at 65, which I think could get a bit of a squeeze. I shorted off the high of the day here uh, at 60 when this broke. I took some out of 57. On the way out to, uh, to VWAP here, I still have about 40% of the position on it. That's only because it was an even better trade yesterday off these same levels. Uh, so I do anticipate that there might even be a southbound trade you know, into this channel that it had in the afternoon yesterday, 54 all the way down to 48. And if it gets in there, I want to have something on board uh, for the bigger win on UAMY over in the Amex. Uh, that's working. Also, I want to come right back over to, uh, I, I mentioned DraftKings very, very briefly. I still have not added to that position uh, in this little market flush. Again, I don't want to fight this move too much, but it is starting to make a bounce. It just got back above 52. If it can hold here, I'll add to that position again off of the low of the day. So far, the bottom pick's been a good one. Brendan, what do you got? Uh, Jinko Solar just keeps going. Uh, another uh, uh, day high and all-time high here for JKS. We talked about this one down around 57, 57 and a half. Uh, we're up to 59 now. Volume still coming into uh, JKS today. Uh, four and a half percent now, guys. Okay, uh, you guys asking what I'm doing with AAL. That's why we hit the siren and we'll hit the cash register. We are out now at 85 uh, on AAL. We didn't get the ultimate low there. We got 85s. Uh, just breaking back upside right there. So uh, if you're asking what we do with AAL now, I don't know. Go to sleep. Uh, I, I don't really want AAL. I mean, this is a big move down. Uh, I'm happy with it. I would only probably look short. But again, uh, it's going to be, a, like I said, you never know when tweets or something's going to come out. Pelosi, Trump always talking. There's Schumer, uh, Mnuchin, everybody there. Nice mask, Nancy. Uh, okay, 12.90 to the upside right now. We'll wait to see if that one wants to go. But uh, okay, I don't know. I think AAL, I'd rather go long uh, than short at these levels. But uh, I don't have anything invested. So uh, take that for what it's worth on these levels on AAL. I'm going to hold off right now for that, that stock. Yeah, and uh, I feel like I'm getting a little bit greedy on AGE here, but it is continuing to roll over. Looks like we got the good short on here, but uh, I want to update you. I didn't mention this one. Uh, I don't know if OPTT was necessarily on the watch list, but uh, anytime there is something that's in play and that is moving, maybe it was something that was on the watch list the, the day before or two days before that, uh, we'll always let you know pre-market, and we talked about this one, OPTT. The only mistake with this trade is probably, and we literally did a video yesterday on A-plus setups, uh, that we all have and uh, there's this retracement play which we always like on a gapper uh, or a second or third day move off of previous levels and this one was more of the latter uh, this is a, a sort of a day two day three retracement where it held uh, below this previous support uh, and, and the close so I short off of that level but the even better trade uh, for me I think is if buying comes in out off the open that cannot break through that resistance shorting it on the way down is the better play uh, I didn't catch that short however when it makes this test, because I'm usually trying to short 270, I'm going to take some off. And the reason why I do that here, despite not getting that fill, is a lot of times you might get a secondary bounce off of what was the opening range low, and then you get a re-entry. So I want to lighten up my position, even if it's flat, which is what I was doing here, because I'm anticipating trying to take a better trade back at 270. It never happened, but that was the thought process. And then that way... I'm adding when it breaks the low, so I stick to that. Even though I don't get the fill at 270, I'm adding on the breakdown at 245. Now it's continuing down to 220. Uh, it could go to two even. That's been the ultimate target, but riding the short all the way long. Uh, it's not just gap ups so that I'll play to the short side. This one down 25% of the day and hammering it southbound continually here on OPTT. Unfortunately, on that spot there from Microsoft, we did get out. But if you guys are still holding yay, it, uh, yay, congratulations, yay, yay, Microsoft yay. now. New highs, and uh, yeah, we had that one. So again, you don't have to always like take exactly the outs that we have. You can take the ideas, and I know that you guys uh, already love my Microsoft calls. So hopefully, some of you uh, are in that. You know that that move down was quite large there on the Nasdaq, and just thought Microsoft would give it up. So our last, uh, this was 20% uh, loser there for six cents, like we did talk about, or breaking through 210. I guess it's more than six cents. It's like 12 cents. Um, but there it is, back to the day's high right there for Microsoft. So once again, guys, congratulations, anybody. Uh, holding that trade. That was a big one. Okay, new position alert. 
that means siren, uh, Viacom there. Uh, some chatter there uh, about some activists. We went long there breaking through VWAP. Again, we're not just going to take these trades just because, well, we are. I mean, it has to be news-based. We talked about that in our A-plus setups. But uh, there's the breakthrough VWAP. So it also gives us that momentum to the upside as well. So right now, Viacom long at 04s. Uh, and we're going to wait upside now. I mean, this is actually pretty good. We could probably get some out right now for 10 cents uh, and then hold the rest. So I'm going to debate that. Uh, I was waiting up here around 20 just thinking that we could get a stop there, but a nice little move up. So let's see. Maybe we get out some Viacom a little earlier than we thought. Here it is right now for 10 cents. Probably take out half uh, for the 10 cents and then see if we can hit uh, like we've been doing. Some chicken dinner winners here on some of these stocks. We'll take out. Oh, here we go. Come on, Viacom. Maybe I don't even need to change it. High side teens right now uh, staring us in the face. So Viacom mover here right now, guys. Activist chatter. Let's go. Viacom on the move. The market back on the move. And I did add to that uh, DraftKings position on the sideways move here at 52. Uh, so it's going to be that price that I continuously get in that or like 85 uh, to that uh, 52 range. I'm going to take some off again in front of VWAP on the way up, of course, is, as uh, we hold lower. Uh, it's going to continue to slide down, obviously. It's going to be a clear downward trend, so I am playing this one counter trend. And yes, Sean G. Mills in the chat, AGE does look strong. And yes, I have been greedy in this one. And yes, it does look like it might be going back to the upside here. Uh, not yet out of the money. You are still seeing it hold below uh, both VWAP and my out at, at 290. Uh, but... Uh, like I've said a couple of times here, uh, a place where it might be out for a short, uh, this was a, a bit of a pullback area. If it breaks, there might be a secondary move to the upside here. And if it tests like that 315 to 330 area, that would probably be where I expect some consolidation uh, through there. If it ever broke four even, uh, uh, good luck uh, for anyone holding a short, probably going to $5. That's what the, the only level I could find. And I literally had to go back to like 2000, the beginning of the year, 2019, uh, to find that level. That's thinking ahead. It's still in the money for me. Uh, the short is still working, but this stock has been strong, strong, strong. Even on not increasing volume here at lunchtime, it is still going to the upside. The only thing that's working in my favor is it's not moving up here on a, a tremendous amount of volume. A lot of times that can be a weak sign. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. My stop is in. My position is on. Nothing for me to do but sit back and wait. Yeah, we're going to hold for a bit more here, but uh, already a nice little win. Uh, again, uh, we're tweeting this out here on Viacom. So uh, out right there for 11 cents, Viacom C there. Uh, and I also did tweet out the headline uh, of the activist chatter behind this name. So a great little in there. We'll see. I mean, I don't know. Viacom, obviously a big dividend uh, in the space right now due to, oh, wow, $10 bottom. Ugh. So many things, man. So many names uh, to have bought at the bottom. Everything pretty much. But you don't get that much. I mean, th like, look at this. 42 down to 10. Wow. Uh, okay, so on some chatter here, uh, we'll see. Activists want to take this thing uh, private, maybe. I don't think they can do that, but uh, 29.90 here, maybe $30 we could get to. What's this high? 28.50. So uh, we're at 29.14 right now. We'll take a shot. I mean, if it doesn't go, uh, then we'll get out back at VWAP. So this will be literally a three cent hit uh, if it doesn't go. So we'll give it a little bit more room uh, back to the downside here, like basically 29 flat. But we already took the profit, and that's what we do. It doesn't look like it wants to go. Now, I may just get out of this one uh, and then just, just run away. But it's not a big position. Like I said, I'll let you know when I'm really feeling a position and we put on real shares, guys. This is not one of those. We've been burned before hopping into something like this. So that's why we scalp out quickly, and we'll wait for a little pop through VWAP uh, if it goes back to the downside. 29 even small little baby out but hey if we can win 11 and then lose four we'll put seven cents in our pocket what the hell not what's up right uh one we were talking about yesterday peck uh just noticed this one uh, just made a new day low on a decent volume spike again so we broke nine there you can see the volume came in another day low here uh, volume coming in as well 16 percent if you remember uh yesterday this thing ran all the way up to 14 14 was a great level for this i kind of wanted this higher this morning but uh didn't even give you a chance but what a move uh, back to the downside for that P-E-C-K, guys. Yeah. That's basically the same stuff that you could have had in that OPTT. So should have been looking at PEC. That's a good one uh, and a good look, Brennan. Uh, OEG, this is another one that's been sort of 
Uh, no, no trouble at all in terms of uh, entries and uh, uh, getting a winner on this uh, retracement play. It's still up 15%, so it's got room to go. Uh, but remember I mentioned uh, the psychological level. We just did a video on penny stocks, and uh, that $1, it, it ends up mattering whether it means anything or not. It's still psychological at that price. Uh, so um, I'm going to trail this one now. I still have some shares on here. We took it at, one, at a buck quarter. Uh, got out of just about everything in front of a buck. Thought maybe it would go to 90 cents. That hasn't happened. Uh, I'm going to get out if it breaks back above a dollar. Uh, sometimes there can be a secondary push if it holds above. Maybe you grab long in front of a dollar risk, a couple of pennies as a day trader to get back to that one quarter mark. It's not a crazy trade. One I'll only put on if the volume starts to pick up above one dollar or you get a big bid there. That was the only reason you might want to pick one of those up. Remember, they're penny stocks for a reason, guys, so you want to uh, at least consider that. Plug power uh, is starting to head southbound again, so I'm going to throw out uh, any notion of maybe uh, getting a shot through the top. I, I had some orders before to break out long, obviously. Uh, doesn't seem like it's going to happen today. Uh, we'll file that one away. We'll, we'll take a look at it if it ever gets uh, a test of that 20. It feels like it's just maybe uh, uh, some obvious profit taking on the way towards it. If it does want to head down, however, uh, apologies for moving this, there's plug power in the corner. If it does want to move uh, further down, not random where it did bottom out here in the morning. Uh, that was also yesterday in the afternoon, uh, some support. So, you know, watch for that 1760 if it can hold. You might get some long trades in the afternoon or certainly after lunch. But uh, plug not there yet. It is negative on the day, but looking like it wants to hold up the same way DraftKings does. We can uh, we can look at plug. We already yeah eighteen thirteen yeah good out. We got in there out. Uh, good job on plug for me there. Uh, but yeah, uh, more room to run. I like it through view up. That's actually a great view up setup right there. Eighteen thirty. Uh, bounce 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 bounce. So we can watch that. Uh, if you guys are trading off of that, not a horrible size there. Eighteen thirty. Uh, if you can get it on that view up trade there uh, for plug power. So that's a good one. Uh, J P Morgan. Like I said, this is more of an investment uh, here play for anybody. Uh, that's looking at that JP Morgan right now. Hold on, I got to get out of that. Uh, JP Morgan now $100. And f Whoa, big move down there. Big move down there on some of that stimulus talk. Uh, wow, sh darn it. Uh, Would have been a great opportunity to pick some up there. Oh, right at day's low there, too. So, yeah, uh, yuck. Uh, we could have easily picked some of these up. Uh, uh, Oh, come on. Like $100 even there, Brendan. That would have been uh, an absolutely great trade. There's the mark right there for you. Also, you could play off this little bottom again, uh, $100 and five cents or something. Straight northbound. Pick up JP Morgan's uh, on some of those dips, man. And like I said, I just never know what's going to happen. So I like to get light when this does happen. What's all this talk about Neo here? Uh, my only losing stock. I've lost on one stock today. So I've traded one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Only ever had, I think, four positions at once. Eleven different names here. Uh, Neo, I tried this break. Fail, fail, fail. And thank God it could have been a lot nastier if we didn't get out of half on the fail. But yeah, big move down. Not a great trade there for Neo. 22.15 out, 90s, 90, sorry, 99s, then out again, 90s. So not great, but Neo. Uh, we can pick some up if it ever comes back to the bottom. Yeah, any big market move down, man. I'm going to go back to Neo. I'm going to go back to uh, Microsoft. And I'm going to go back to JP Morgan on some of these flushes, man. Uh, this is going to be good. Viacom, though, before I throw it back to Neil here, only 13 minutes left, first of all. Viacom does retest back down to VWAP. We didn't get any more. I thought actually it was going to crash. Didn't. So now I'm pretty confident in this. We've already taken... Uh, 11 cents and we'll wait to see if we get some more my targets like right oh around my. here i have an offer if we can ever get to 29 30 man we'll take this thing out i hate this stock uh, age uh but i gotta show you guys if i can see it here uh some bids showing up and believe me there's only 20 or 30 thousand shares uh, on this bid at 80 at 88 uh but a second ago i saw some interesting 200 thousand share bids there you are on arca uh so uh, again i cannot promise you that if it goes through that price it's actually going to take a fill uh some of it looks uh a little bit suspicious, but either way, I can't let it break too much further past this before getting out. Like I said, I've had this sort of 70 short the entire way. And, and, and again, I'm not going to let it go too far. I'm not saying those bids are legitimate because uh, I need to see it come to that price and then it hold. And what I mean by that is if, if it gets on the bid and you start seeing actual fills off, of, off an order like that, then I'll actually give it some respect. Uh, otherwise, it could just be uh, some fake Hell size yeah. here. But either way, buying back up in AGE, if it makes another push here, guys, it would not be crazy uh, for this to go parabolic once again. And I might not fight this one and go jump back into a long trade. Flipping long to short, that's the only stock I'm negative on. Maybe I should get away from it, but it's hard to do, especially when the levels have been good. The direction is just always wrong uh, on these. If it breaks through even, 
335, and then four uh, to the upside are pretty obvious. I'm going to be out of this, uh, but like I said, I, I gotta I gotta try this long just based on the buying that came into there on volume and that buyer that stepped up on the level two. It's hard to ignore that for a scalp trade into the next level up, which would be about 315 to 330, as I mentioned. So let's see what happens on AGE. Uh, no promises here, but uh, this long. Uh, looking like it could be again on the go. The stock is relentless, people. Uh, wife also sending me uh, to go pick this wine up here, uh, a Bordeaux. So uh, we'll do that. The best part about this, this bottle right now, $14.95. Yeah, I'll pick that up. No problem. That's just a little scalp. So let me make one of those and uh, we'll pay that off. Uh, but there it is, the bottle for tonight. Uh, I guess that goes well with chicken pot pie. I don't even know if that's going to be uh, ready or not by tonight. But we are getting set up. We haven't really teased it too much. I hope it can uh, work and go through. But something that's near and dear to the hearts of all of us here uh, at Day Trade the World. Um, it's it's going to be a very special thing. Let's throw it over to Brendan. I think we're ready. What's up, Brendan? Yeah, she, uh, she's going to come on here in a few minutes, guys. We're going to talk to a very special guest, Ali. Adams, a fixture here in the uh, finance uh, community, I guess we'll uh, call it here in Toronto. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, organ donation, uh, both in Canada and the U.S., and uh, talk a little bit about Ali and her story as well. So that's coming up in a second. Just wanted to mention, guys, uh, CGC, uh, back to cannabis land. Yeah, look at the volume still coming in here, guys. CGC just making another day high, guys. And I'm going to hit the weed, Batman, because you know what? We talked about Canopy, and like I told you, October 5th, Mark that day down, man. It's only the 8th. Or was it the 3rd? I don't remember what day it was. But I told you guys, load, start loading up on some marijuana cannabis stocks just because if the Democrats win, uh, that could just boost it a little bit. And right now, Joe Biden trending uh, to in the polls. Anyways, we all know what polls mean. Uh, but trending like a victory right now. So uh, good name there uh, on some of that spot uh, as well. So that's, that's a good one. Thanks for that, uh, Brendan. 29.15 uh, right there on Viacom. Look, I don't really have anything else on. We're only eight minutes to go. It's only Viacom for me. Uh, we've been looking around, and, and I'm pretty happy with my day, obviously, today. Uh, big winners over here. Super happy. Ding! That's my idea today, is to now stay flat. I'm going to enjoy this interview again. It's very special. It means a lot to us here uh, at Day Trade the World that we help give back and, and identify some of the special things uh, that are happening. And again, um, it, you know, wait till you see it. It's going to be a good one. Uh, with Brendan. So we'll have that on in a minute. Um, Neil, your DraftKings, man. I mean, it's just 52. Like, yep. can it not get going at some point? Uh, this is the thing. It's getting frustrating. The only positive about it is it just, uh, it, it, you know, if you see it at the level two every now and then, uh, what will happen is, and this is at a higher price, uh, a, a bit of a bid shows up and then stabilizes the stock. And this happened uh, both in the mid 80s and then again at 52 and now at 52.10. So that's positive for the long. I mean, the fact that it did make this hard failure or right around VWAP at the time uh, and then shy of this retracement level here at 53, that's not a good sign. So it's kind of combating things here. Uh, the only reason why I'm going to still be in it, of course, is uh, this is more of a higher time frame look, right? So if you, if you do look at it from the perspective of yesterday's bottom, uh, holding that 51.65 a couple of times now, you know, that's, that's really what gives me the confidence to kind of keep this trade on. It would be easy to just take it off and say, okay, you're up on the stop because it did give you the bounce. And I'm still in the money, like, you know, 10, 15 cents. If I literally covered it here, no problems. But when I go to that higher time frame, it still looks good. And if I'm going to take this trade, I've got to give it to that support uh, from previous day. If that's my reason for getting in, that break has to be my reason for getting out. Unless something, uh, something crazy happens, like... I don't know, like maybe they make it official about uh, what happens with the Bills or something like uh, that game could be called off. Or maybe better not get called off. Another I, outbreak. I, I, I know. Look, I have Josh Allen in my other pool, too. So it's not just you. Uh, I need the Bills to play because, A, they're going to win. And, B, Josh Allen's going to put up like eight gazillion yards and five touchdowns. Uh, but either way, uh, that's another story. We're looking forward to this. Uh, Sean teed it up. Uh, but we need to get to our guest tra uh, trader of the day. Something near and dear to our hearts. Not guest trader, but our guest of the day. Uh, this is going to be a fantastic one. We urge you guys uh, to pay attention uh, and listen to this guest. Let's go to Brendan for the introduction. Yeah, very happy, guys, to uh, bring on a special guest uh, this morning to talk a little bit about uh, a cause, as we mentioned, that's uh, very dear to us, uh, near and dear to us. Uh, we've donated in the past and supported the uh, University Health Network. Ali Adams has been a fixture uh, in the uh, financial community, I guess we'll call it, uh, here in Toronto for uh, many, many years and is also living with uh, type 1 diabetes. It's great to have Ali with us today. Uh, good morning, Ali. How are you? 
Good morning, Brendan. I'm well, thanks. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, first off, your story, how you got started, I guess, in the uh, the community here in Toronto, as I mentioned. You know, very tight-knit group. Uh, word spreads very quickly, and we're here to kind of help where we can uh, with you and your story. And uh, maybe tell us a little bit about uh, that first. Yeah, certainly. So I started my career at the Toronto Stock Exchange uh, doing investor relations for high growth tech companies as well as financial services companies and then moved over to Canaccord Genuity and did marketing and communications there and I'm now at McCarthy Tatra doing uh, much of the same thing in a in a different capacity so uh, the financial services world the professional services world is uh, really all I know and as you mentioned it is a very tight-knit community so uh, that's why I'm here and I'm here to sort of mention my story which is uh, you know, living with type 1 diabetes and going through end-stage kidney failure and what a transplant can mean and, and how people can get involved. Yeah, so why don't we, uh, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, your story. Uh, three decades uh, you've been living with uh, type 1 diabetes uh, and found out some uh, unfortunate information uh, this year, in fact, about uh, your current condition. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, sure. So uh, as you mentioned, I've been type 1 diabetic for 30 years, which seems kind of crazy. Um, and unfortunately, this year, uh, I've sort of hit uh, an unfortunate point in my in my kidney function and my renal function, which is I've moved to stage 5 kidney failure, uh, which means my kidneys are operating at about 10%. So you can imagine 10% of anything is not great. And one of the great options that uh, transplant uh, recipients have is this sort of notion of living kidney uh, donation or living organ donation more broadly speaking and you know personally I had no idea what that was or really even meant before I went through went through this but what it effectively means is that anyone living can donate uh, one entire kidney uh, you have two and you only need one and you can help save lives and we invest obviously as your audience knows in in things and stocks all the time but this is a way to really invest in people and uh it's quite remarkable what is possible when we are able to do these sorts of things and and uh we can really save lives and now let's talk a little bit about uh some numbers we have some uh, visuals to help kind of support us on this uh alley uh when it comes to both uh, the canadian the current situation in canada and also in the u.s as far as uh, some of the uh, organ donation numbers uh, why don't we touch on those a little? Yeah, certainly. So I think, you know, one of the things that struck me, obviously, is many people are supportive of the idea of organ donation. So about 90% of people in Canada and the U.S. say that they believe in organ donation, uh, but only 20% in Canada and 60% respectively in the U.S. Um, have actually filled out their donor card. Uh, and the number of type 1 diabetics is increasing sort of day by day and has a huge economic impact, both on productivity, but also on uh, respective healthcare systems. So if we were able to have folks consider a living kidney or living organ donation, uh, those lists would basically become unnecessary overnight. Like if one in 100,000 Canadians decided to uh, donate a kidney, the list would be gone overnight. Uh, so it's pretty remarkable what is um, possible. It's just really mobilizing people and building awareness around some of these issues. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's a pretty staggering number when you, you know, put it in those terms. The list would just be gone just like that overnight. So uh, very important, I think, uh, you know, to not only get the message out, but maybe to uh, kind of help people direct them in the right direction as far as uh, where we can get more information if people are interested. Uh, tell them how uh, they can get involved, first of all, and how we can get more information on this. Yeah, for sure. So UHN um, has a Center for Living Organ Donation. Um, there's a website called liveon.ca that you can visit. Um, and yeah. it's really, that's really all it is, is, is looking at UHN, looking at the Center for Living Organ Donation, um, you don't need to be a blood type match. You do not need to worry about your age. Um, you know, so long as you don't have a laundry list of pre-existing conditions, really anyone can donate. 
Um, and then filling out your organ donation card is also a really easy place to start as well as giving blood. And where, if uh, anyone watching is wondering where, you know, if, if no one understands, first of all, what an organ donation card is or where they can find that, uh, where would uh, somebody locate that? Yeah, so if you go to giveblood.ca, um, it's right there. It's easy to find um, and uh, it takes two seconds. So uh, I'd really encourage everyone to do that. And obviously, I'm very grateful for everyone for participating. Fantastic. Uh, listen, Ali, we we wish you all the best. Nothing but, uh, you know, good health in the, in the future. Uh, Ali is going to be appearing with our friends over at the Canadian uh, Securities Exchange uh, via Instagram this afternoon. Uh, we're going to put that link both in our chat and also uh, out on Twitter. It's 2.15 p.m., correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Okay, great. So, yeah, uh, with uh, the Canadian Securities uh, Exchange and CSE TV guys at 2.15 p.m., PM this afternoon. Please go check her out there. Uh, all the best, Ali. It's great to see you and uh, great to speak with you. Yeah, thanks so much. Have a great day. You too. There you go, guys. Yeah, a little bit of uh, a different uh, story, but uh, one obviously definitely near and dear to us, as, as we mentioned. Uh, I hope you'll take a second and, uh, you know, go check out University Health Network, first of all, and uh, look into more information on becoming a living donor. Guys. I went directly to that website right here and I pulled it up, made sure I bookmarked it because, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things, uh, we, we have a lot of fun on the show and it's uh, obviously going to be, it's obviously going to be a, a geared towards trading, but uh, giving back is something that, that is near and dear to our hearts, as Sean already mentioned, and I know uh, we all feel pretty strongly about this and we wish Allie all the best. We thank her for coming on uh, as well, so please uh, do check this link out and at least consider, uh, consider that request to go get tested. I think that would be fantastic if all of you guys uh, did that. Uh, we heard the staggering numbers, and that's impressive. I had no idea uh, that that would be true. I mean, literally overnight, you could get, get rid of that list. But uh, we need to get over to Valeria, who has a little bit of something for us. Uh, let's go to Miss V. Thank you, Neil, and hey guys, thank you for another great day together. Thank you for all the support and super chat. If you didn't like this video yet, please spend one second and smash the like button so we can reach 2,000 likes. For now, guys, watch our next video about our runes trading journey. And this actually reminds me of Russia. Happy National Pierogies Day, everyone. Pierogies, I got, got little pieces of bacon up in there. Pierogies, yeah, look, if Valeria's happy, I'm happy, Neil. So uh, pierogies for the win. And, and, and again, thanks uh, for that segment, Brendan, uh, and getting uh, some of the, you know, some of the names out there. Uh, Health Network and whatnot, thanks for showing the website as well. But uh, pierogies, you got to have that sour cream. I, I like the bacon on pierogies. I didn't have my first pierogi till I was in high school. I didn't even know what they were, to be honest with you. They're actually pretty tasty, I'm not going to lie. But bacon is an absolute must, and I do not like sour cream. So I stay away from it personally. Uh, uh, Valeria mentioned it. Uh, I'll throw it up one last time for you guys because uh, he's the main man. Uh, Arun, uh, we love him here, and I know you guys do as well. So please uh, make sure you check out his trader journey. It's an interesting one. He's the only uh, full-time futures trader who trades almost nothing else. I mean, he trades equities as well, but a uh, uh, heavy trader in the futures. Uh, one of the few ones we have here on the floor. So uh, learn from his journey. It's an interesting one and one that I think you guys are going to be able to relate to. I don't want to spoil it for you. you got to check it out on the Market Wisdom page here. He's an important member of our team, and I know you guys all know and love him. But it is 12, which means, unfortunately for us, we got to get out of here. Uh, lots to watch for out further in the afternoon. Any, any, uh, keep your ear to the ground for any kind of stimulus talk. Uh, that could definitely move the airlines. It already has once for the entire team. For Valeria, for Sean Katina, for Brendan Wickens, uh, I am Neil Roberts. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Trader TV Live. See you guys tomorrow. See ya.